Welcome along to beautiful Muscat. We're in Al Emirat, about 20 minutes away from the capital city. This wonderful Oman Cricket Academy facility, the host for the 2024 ACC Men's Premier Cup. Ten teams all come here with one dream, dreams of going to that Asia Cup that will be held next year in the T20 format, a return to the T20 format. Nepal, the reigning champions, but that was in the 50 overs side of things. And we're all set on morning one of the tournament. It's the hosts in action immediately. Oman taking on Bahrain here at Al Amarat Cricket Ground in the primary oval, oval number one. Andrew Leonard here with you. And a little while earlier, my colleague Mikhail Vaswami was down with the two captains for the toss. Let's go and find out what happened. Day one of the ACC Men's T20 Premier Cup 2024. It's toss time here at the Al Amirat Oman Cricket Academy. I have the two team captains alongside me. Captain of Oman, Zishan Maksud. Captain of Bahrain, Heather Ali. And to adjudicate the flip of the coin, Hamim Talwar, the match referee. Home team, Zishan, will be flipping the coin. Heather, you'll be calling. Heather, you win the toss. What have you decided and why? Ball first. Uh, this weather is little moisture in the half hours. Maybe my bowlers uh, is <coughs> except though is a, a moisture. Maybe is a early two wickets in a low scoring innings. Right. What's the total that you're looking to restrict your opposition now that you're bowling first? Maybe 120, 130. You all have been playing some very fine cricket. You as captain as well enjoying this new role. Yeah, yeah. His new role. I'm young, youngest player in a team, but all senior guys will support me and. Uh, DCF and the board members and the coaching staff, too, too much supporting. Right, big opportunity for you all. All the very best and good luck. Uh, thank you, sir. Zishan, happy to bat first or were you looking to bowl as well in these conditions? Yeah, definitely like to bowl first, but uh, because we have played on this track, uh, it is a very good batting track as well. So if uh, we put a good total on board, so that will be help for us. When you talk about a good total. What's like a good total on the surface? I think uh, if we batter well, 160 plus runs will be a good total. Oman has been playing some exceptional cricket in the recent times. Uh, what's been the success mantra? I think the players are playing very well and the uh, management is also backing up uh, uh, coaches, uh, you know, physios and everybody is working hard because uh, there's uh, plenty of, uh, you know, tournaments are coming up. So we are getting up. So hopefully we'll uh, give our best uh, for this tournament. Right. Good luck, Zishan. All the very best. Thank you very much. Right. So the news from the center is that Bahrain and won the toss. They have decided to bowl first. Well, there we are. That's the news from the middle. A very overcast sky. It's not really reminiscent of Muscat, maybe. A little bit lower, more like Melbourne or something like that. And an autumn evening. Definite threat of rain. There's the two starting 11s. 14 player squads for all 10 teams in this competition. No space today for Bahrain for Junaid Aziz. Abdul Majid Malik and Ubaid Mirtatsa Minhas miss out. And then for Oman. Missing out Ayan Khan, the left arm spinner. No Kali Muller, he's struggling a little bit with a lower back injury. And Mehran Khan, the experienced old hand, also misses out. So plenty of spin options. Shaquille Ahmed, Zishan Maksud, and Aki Bilyas certainly maybe could be one of the stars of the tournament. We've got two games in action concurrently. Bahrain winning the toss, electing to bowl here. And across on oval two, we've got a really good contest where... UAE will be taking on Kuwait. Opening the batting for Oman, we're going to see Kashap Prajapati alongside Mohammed Nassim Kushi really being sent in in a bit of a pinch hitting role. You can see him there, very big hitter, loves it over long on the cow corner region. And it's going to be the right arm quick Ali Dawood to get things going. Andrew Leonard here alongside Pranav Mehta. Pranav, great to be back with you and great to be back here in Muscat. This should be an excellent tournament. Pleasure, pleasure for sure, Andrew. The hospitality of Oman is something that is going to be witnessed by all these nine visiting teams alongside Oman that is participating in this all-important tournament, the Men's T20 Premier Cup 2024. What an event. And we are on the way. Very first delivery. Well, starts with a gentle away swinger, which will be signalled as a wide. Great to have some experienced umpires here too. S. Ravi standing alongside umpire 
Lambo Kuala, our TV umpire from Nepal, that's Vinay Kumar Jha. We will have the third umpire purely for line decisions. That will be for stump pins and run outs only. Naresh D'Souza, our reserve umpire. And we all saw the match referee there, Hami Mullah Hamid, who was greeted by Mikhail at the toss. The first runs are going to be a boundary. The first legal delivery driven away very stylishly, overpitched, and it's an immediate flying start from Oman. This is something that Kashyap is in here to do. He loves to play his shots, loves to utilize this power play, and this is something that he's consistently going to be doing in his arc, driving on the squarish region, keeping it all along, along the ground. This is sign of man and confidence, Andrew. He's got a lot of runs in the last few months behind his back. Not the greatest piece of positioning by the backward point fielder. Daewood bowls right arm away swing. It's always going to beat you on your left. Not sure he's got his angle quite right. A year ago, we were in Kathmandu for this tournament in, in the 50 overs version. It was, well, it was sensational, wasn't it? Really captured the imagination of the world. And Nepal made history. First time qualifying for the Asia Cup. Who's the favourites here? The, maybe the hosts Oman, UAE, Nepal, Hong Kong. Can't rule out these Gulf sides either. See, you, you're always expecting a surprise, but you know, when you're talking about favorites, the host has to be one of them. They have had a wonderful couple of years, especially when we're talking about the T20 format. So they are something that have to be considered. Also alongside them are the neighboring countries, UAE. They are one of the better sides in the tournament, Nepal, obviously, as well, rising. So some extra bounce for the Lad Ali. Ali. Andrew, what are your picks? Well, look, I think it's very hard to call. It's associate cricket, it's T20 cricket. Unpredictable. I think Oman uh, on home soil will be very formidable. It'll be difficult to beat. You, you think of the quality of, of player they have. And Aki Bilia, since his return from that... Uh, that Horrendous illness injury that he had, really quite something. I'm just going to have a slight hold up and play here. The batter needs some attention, and the two umpires just coming together. I think it's just a little bit of tape needed for the bottom of the bat. But yeah, certainly UAE, the quality that they have. The big surprise for me, Vriti Aravan left out of that squad. I really can't get my head around that, given his record here in Oman in particular. But Mohammed Wazim can win you a game in a heartbeat. Someone like. Barbara Hyatt for Hong Kong. I think Malaysia are a very underrated T20 side. It certainly would be a stronger T20 than 50 over team. But in reality, it's all going to come down to, to three games, isn't it? You've got to get through your group to start with. And then it's about two semis and a final. There's two separate prizes on offer here. The winners will, will go to the Asia Cup. That's the grand prize, the, the gold medal, if you will. But then silver and bronze is a fine prize too. You, alongside the winners, will go to the ACC Emerging Teams Cup. And that's something that, from a cricket development perspective, is wonderful for these teams, getting to play against the A-sides of the five test nations in the region. That's India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and Afghanistan. So, so much to play for here in Muscat. Going to be an excellent event, I've no doubt. And I expect maybe an upset or two along the way as well. Good use of the feet, gets a good piece of it, and he's not going to need to run as the outfield's quick enough. Thuds into the rope, a nice start from Prajapati. The opening partners were Prajapati, Kashyap Prajapati and Pratika Thavle, and now it has Naseem Kushi who's walked in. So this is something that Naseem Kushi adds to the flavor of the opening partnership with Kashyap. He loves to play his shots. He, has a w he had a wonderful Namibian tour he was here just a couple of weeks ago. And that's where he cemented his pay place as an opener. Nasim Kushi, such a dynamic player. Yeah, it is indeed Nasim Kushi. Our new graphic suite just confusing me as we get going. It's a really good start, though, for Oman. End of the first, 11 for none. So we're going to look at the two starting 11s here, Pranav, and you surprised to see the, the kind of the matchup that Oman have gone with from a bowling perspective. There's so many options with 
Aquí Billias adding that balance. Three spinners, three seamers, you see. If you're talking about the bowling options, obviously you have the spin domination of Arke Billias, the captain Zishan Maksud, and obviously the left arm spin of Shaquille Ahmed. But then you have the lovely pace attack. You have Ahmed, Ahmed Fayaz, but the real lethal right hand pacer. And then Bilal Khan, who has been the talk of the town, talk of the world rather in the franchise cricket that he's been playing all round. Rafiullah and Mohammed Nadeem also are alongside to contribute. So a lot of bowling options, something that you get with Oman. They play with a lot of all rounders, which gives them the depth in the batting and bowling options as well. Rizwan Butt to get things going. And more aggression. That's going to come all the way up nearly to us. An almighty strike down the ground. He's known as a six hitter. Usually over long on. This time it's over long off. What a strike. A sign of things to come throughout this ACC Men's Premier Cup. Six from the moment it left the bat. There's a wonderful wicket to bat on. Namibia and Oman played on this wicket a few days ago and they piled on 200 plus against Oman and on this occasion it is Nassim Kushi who performed brilliantly in that tour in that entire series he was dominating as a batter as an opening batter and he's continuing to his form into this ACC T20 Premier Cup here yeah, you think of Nassim Kushi you think of him as a finisher so often being Jatinder Singh up the top they'll get an overthrow here Bahrain already well, slightly being run ragged by the hosts. But Singh probably really just played his way out of the team. A lack of runs in recent times. And not a bad option, is it, to get Kushi in at the top? It's always the best time to bat. Think of someone like a, a Kevin O'Brien from Ireland who spent much of his career down at six and seven, exactly where Kushi's gone. And then right towards the end, he went up the top with Paul Sterling with great success. Could be replicated by Kushi. Flying start at least. He's not going to waste too many deliveries, is he, up the top? It's a brave decision from Oman. You cannot take it away from the Oman team. Especially when you have the pair of Pratika Tavle and Kashyap Prajapati consistently contributing with starts of 40s and 50s. And then breaking that partnership to bring in a dynamic opener to make use of this power play. Power play plays a, such an important role in this T20 format. Just two fielders outside the circle. And I feel there. Oman has played their trump card by using Pratika Thavle as a wicket keeper and Nassim Kushi, who is a wicket keeper, using him as a genuine opener. Yeah, really good success in that series against Namibia, too. Played three of the five matches 66, 34, 49. And all of those innings coming generally at a pretty good clip as well 49 of just 28, <laughs> four sixes most recently. To have a look at the maximum. It's a real kind of slash, isn't it, down the ground? Right up towards where we're commentating from. The media centre, this development that was finished in time for the T20 World Cup that the UAE and Oman co-hosted back in 2021. And a misfield, a backward point to allow the single. Such a wonderful side as Oman when they're playing here at the Oval One of the Oman Cricket Academy. They understand the conditions pretty well. They make use of these conditions pretty well as well. There's something for everyone. The, the curator, Anup, he's done a wonderful job, job along with the groundsmen. Something for the spinners, something for the pacers, and batters obviously love this wonderful wicket. I watched quite a few of those games. There was a few mixed scores, wasn't there? There was some low scores to start with, but Really high scoring contest to end as Namibia came back to win the series. Now innovation. Look at that. The wrong foot scoop and brilliance from Kushi. We saw him play that a bit against Namibia. He's going to get another boundary. And Oman are off to a flyer. End of the second, 25 for none. That is what you get with a man in form. Not afraid to play shots. He's 
coming with the back of a lot of scores behind his back and that's what is allowing him to express himself here in such an important tournament. Yeah, certainly, if you look at the, the two games today to come into operation in this morning session, UAE and Oman will be favourites, but we, we have seen both Kuwait and Bahrain, to a lesser extent Qatar, often upset the apple cart. This is very much their specialist format, the Gulf sides, they play almost exclusively T20 cricket. There is a little bit of 50 over and 40 over cricket as well, but a real focus on the shortest format. think about the single but Prajapati sends Kushi back and when you get that what you can tend to get is some upsets and UAE, Oman, Nepal, Hong Kong they may be the four highest ranked sides they'll need to be at their best. These are the teams as well including Qatar they've done pretty well here in Oman they've they won sides Bahrain as well they've won, si won matches here at the Oman Cricket Academy so they would fancy their chances as well and the reason they're able to dominate here is A, they play a lot of T20 cricket. They play that fearless brand of cricket and you get that consistently. They might lose wickets in the process but they will continue to showcase their talent, sh showcase their shot making and that's where it becomes a v they become a really lethal side. Yeah, and probably a little bit like Oman. They're, they're stocked full of all-rounders. So particularly, you think about the batting depth that Bahrain and Kuwait bring. Guys coming in at 9 and 10 will be as likely to clear the ropes as your openers. So I change of the field. Long arm going to go back now. Means that uh, fine leg and third should be up in the circle. In fact, they need to be careful because as of right now, there are three men outside the circle. And if this ball is delivered, it should be given as a no ball. And just as he's about to run up, finally, the man at deep third gets told. That was very nearly a bit of a calamity for Bahrain. Three men outside the circle. I wonder, the batter noticed. I wonder, was he revved up to just have a free swing? Tries to go a long way up. Now, deep backward square comes underneath it. This has gone nearly to the moon, but ultimately it's held on to an excellent catch. An extraordinary stroke. He's tried to whip it from a mile outside the off stump, but he's ended up just picking out deep backward square. Rapathurin, who takes an excellent catch, and Bahrain have the first wicket of the morning. That's one of the better catches. It's a wide background considering the cloud cover, and the ball went up a mile, and to hold on to something as good as that, it's a wonderful catch, especially when you are seeing the back of Nasim Kushi, the dynamic Nasim Kushi, who's here to make an explosion. 18 of seven deliveries for him, one maximum and two boundaries. So Oman, off to a start, 26 for one, and they wouldn't mind that. Aki Bilyas to the crease. I think everyone who knows their associate cricket will well, really call him one of the, the very best. He's been in sparkling form, not just with the, the bat either, with the ball. His, his bowling is coming to the fore more and more so in recent times. Those off breaks to the left-hander, the leg breaks to the right-hander. Shades of Liam Livingston. So that was that wonderful shot, which went nowhere. Right up. Pro probably missed the trick there. Arkip is being tested here by Ali Daud. Three was done.
26 for one Oman. It really was a, a, an extraordinary shot, wasn't it? Uh, take a look at this. You probably won't really see it from the side angle, but it's almost the, the guideline outside the off stump. He's tried to whip it from into the leg side, and given that long on and deep backward square are out, just, it was almost too premeditated for my liking. If he stood there, he's got all that power, hits it over mid-off extra. He's hitting with the swing, hitting with the shape of the delivery. Probably would have got four, given his ball striking quality. But in many ways, 18 off seven in the power play. That's not a bad start. Hasn't chewed up any dots and now gives Aki Bilyas and Prajapati the chance to rebuild. Rizwan will continue. Do you expect high scores uh, throughout this tournament? A good time of year to be playing cricket here? It's just a summer that has just peaked in. Obviously, the the clouds, the weather has been playing games here in Oman throughout this entire start of 2024. It's been cloudy very often, something that you don't generally see in Oman. And that only makes things pleasant because otherwise it'll get to somewhere around 40, 38, 42 degrees. Cap beat the man inside the circle. So we'll just get a single to get off the mark, Aki Bilyas. Yeah, I was across in, in the UAE for the Ireland tour there, playing against Afghanistan. Ireland picking up their first ever Test match victory. Very unseasonal weather, colder than usual. We had an entire game washed out in Sharjah, where I think it rains about two or three days of the year. That was the same day Scotland were due to play up in Dubai in Cricket World Cup League 2. So I think if you bring Irish people and Scottish people to the same place, we just create the rain. But it definitely it has a different feel to usual here in Muscat today. As For sure, that struck beautifully straight down the ground. This is something that has been coming into on the Oman side. They're looking to play that attacking game. And yes, coming back to your question, it is a little too different here in Oman. The weather has been different just in the arc of Kashyap Kumar Prajapati and he's never going to be missing out on that. The quality of Kashyap Kumar Prajapati, elegance, the flavorful Kashyap Kumar Prajapati, always looking to play shots, positive. One thing, Andrew, that's going to be playing a very important role in this tournament is the spinners. You see the square boundaries, almost around 70 yards, and miss hits are going to stay inside the ground. Something which you just saw with Nasim Khushi, on smaller grounds, that mi it might have been just closer to the boundary rope. This one stays inside. Yeah, certainly it's a really good oval. That actually applies for both grounds. I know oval two feels a bit smaller, but equally the diameters are, are very appropriate. Yeah, big challenge for, for Bahrain here, coming up against higher ranked opposition. Certainly that unseasonal feel to the weather is continued here in Oman. It's, it's been throughout the Gulf region, but it doesn't affect the temperature. 36 today with highs of potentially 40, a lot of humidity too. One thing Mikhail was just saying to me off here, with all that overclass clouds, we would have expected some movement through the air. There's been none this morning. Good carry though, short and wide. Ilias misses out. A lot of that movement is courtesy of the wind that generally blows in this ground, which is not the case at the moment. If you have a look at the flag over the Oman Cricket Academy. Rizwan, what a bowler. A good finish to his second over, despite that maximum. He's only gone for nine in it. Four have been both, 35 for one. How do you see this, this order lining up? It's obviously not the order it will be in. There's no way Bilal Khan's going to be batting seven. Uh, what, who will be at four, five, and six? It has to be that man walking in at number 11 in this list, Zishan Maksud, the captain. He's expected to be coming in next. And then you would have Khalid Kale. He's been a dynamic player. Then you always have the power of Rafiullah, Shaquille Ahmed, 
you obviously have a little bit of batting from Fayaz, but as well that comes into play. And Pratik Atavle, it could be that free-flowing player. He could be used if wickets fall in a hurry or could be held back as well. He's a dynamic batter as well. He's a generally an opener, scored really a lot of runs, but now on the waiting. Satya. Yeah, just a few little medium pacers we'll see here. Surprised the keeper hasn't come up to the stumps. No real need for keeper to be back. Just kind of nibble it about, a throwback to a bowler from the mid-90s. Does swing it both ways and just tries to get it to hit the same and move either way. He could be a bowler to target for Oman. He's really done well in Satya, Satya in Oman. He's got, the last time he was here, he's picked up lots, lots of wickets. Won games for Bahrain. And that's where he would fancy a chance here. Probably the reason for the wicketkeeper being behind is that sudden bounce in the initial overs. Yeah, I think most keepers would, would fancy their chances. We've seen uh, Heiner classing up to the stumps to 140 kilometers an hour there recently in the IPL. With due respect to Sathaya Virap, and he's probably bowling about 115 kilometers an hour in and around. Very much military medium. Has a game plan, though, and we'll stick to it. Both mid off and mid on, up in the circle. Batter can absolutely use their feet if they want. Chance and put down. Not easy. Just gets the one hand to it. And it bobbles in and out. Safraz Ali, the big man. Well, a big moment. Aki Bilyas, maybe the last man in this tournament you want to drop. It was a half tracker to start off with. Got a lot of bat, Aki Bilyas, And this should have been taken nine out of ten times. Probably ten out of ten times. Not going in with two hands, and that's where he would regret. Yes, he's practicing the skills right now. Surely should have had two hands to it. You cannot be dropping the likes of somebody like Alka Villas. Little inside edge this time. Just a bit of nibble, isn't there? Just a bit of something for uh, Verappen. Maybe that, that pace. There's been a little bit of talk of, with the amount of cricket here in recent times. These wickets slowing down a touch. Beautiful square on, on both of the ovals will be playing that, but maybe pace off is going to be a big factor throughout this tournament, not just for the spinners, for the seamers too. The cutters, you can see there, he's definitely bowling down the seam, keeping it very simple and very effective to start with. For sure, general Asian conditions here at the Oman Cricket Academy. Slow, low wickets, that's something that you get generally in Asian conditions. The climate is heating up, the wickets are difficult to maintain. It's generally off season at the at the moment, but then the season has just continued. Can't pierce the circle and Prajapati is furious with himself. Just four from Verappen's first over. Bahrain are fighting back nicely in this power play. Quarter way through the first innings. Oh man, 39 for one. Schedule's pretty tight here. Talk about the tournament from the 12th to the 21st. All the sides will play four group games, and then there'll be two semi finals and a third place playoff and a final after that. Uh, the conditions, the heat, the humidity, and that schedule being so intense, there's going to be a battle of stamina and endurance as well as the, the cricket skills on the field. For sure, but everything to play for. It's a big tournament. They've been preparing for it. And obviously, Oman is qualified for the World Cup, so they are going to be traveling to the World Cup as well. So this tournament is, is seen as a preparatory camp to that big stage. A lot of cricket. It was the D10s which started off this things in Oman, then the D50s, then you had a couple of international fixtures that have happened, and now the ACC Premier Cup. So it's consistent flow of cricket for the Omani lads in these grounds. Pretty well maintained, Andrew. Yeah, beautiful condition. Safraz Ali, another one of the right-arm seamers. If you haven't seen Ali ball before, a very economical action. He just comes up off a few steps and balls these little away swingers. Now the keeper's up to the stumps, Imran. But not sure that Safraz Ali is any slower than <laughs> for happen, So maybe he'll come up for both of them. But again, he looks very innocuous, doesn't he? But he is a wicket taker, Ali. Just a little bit of shape away from the right-handers. This is a very unlikely start for Arkebilias. Four of ten deliveries. He generally starts off 
with the plan of dominating the opponent opposing side and on this occasion he is holding on he does realize that he can capitalize on any any particular moment and that's where kashyap has a bigger role to play yeah the modern t20 game even a period as brief as this four off 10 can get your team and and your individual innings into trouble he's been dropped on one i named him as one of the stars of the tournament one of the ones to watch and well, right now he started not well at all. You can catch up, but it's more difficult in T20 cricket. Don't have the same leeway that you have in the 50-over game. And the big appeal, and we're going to go upstairs. The first use of the reserve umpire. So our third umpire, that will be Nepal's Vinay Kumar Jha, will come into play here. Bahrain look a little interested, but Aki Bilyas looks non 2 plus. We'll find out now. It's very unlikely, Akabilias, just as I mentioned, and you can't take it away from Akabilias. He's looked to play his shots, just not able to connect, just not able to get runs as quickly as he would have liked. And at the moment, he is facing that patient wait. He wants to be there, he wants to get runs in the very first game against Bahrain here. And he's waiting for a decision here. Yeah, so this is the process, and, and great credit to the Asian Cricket Council for getting the TV umpire alongside our production partners in uh, play for this. We will check the front foot no ball first, I suspect, and then we'll have a look at the stumping. There's also the big screen there in place. So that's the front foot we'll have a look at first. These are our fixed cameras. No problem at all with that. And as we roll through to the other fixed camera, what will Vinay Kumar see? Bahrain have already given their opinion on it. They think it's not out, despite the appeal. Always wonder why, if you're in the field, if you think something's not out, why would you appeal? But hopefully the technology will roll through now and Vinay Kumar Jha will get a good look at the stumping. Didn't look to me as though Aki Bilyas raised his foot, but we'll find out now. Yeah, no harm done. No problem at all. So the decision for Vinay Kumar Jha will be an easy one. It will be not out, and, but a good first trial run of the technology. Everyone just getting used to it on the opening morning of the competition. So the green light has flashed, and Aki will continue. Two balls to go in the power play really really needs to get going here Archibillas 4 of 11 deliveries and he'll hold on to nudge it on the leg side they're pushing for the second and this is good running wonderful running from Archibillas and Kashyap Kumar Prajapati and they'll get more runs make it a 6 without hitting a 6 yeah count them up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 it's not a regulation maximum by any stretch, but it will be six. A quickly run couple, and then an errant throw. This is very poor cricket from Bahrain, and particularly from the backing up. There's three men there. Look at them standing there. So one gets to the stumps. I don't mind that. But look at the guys, hands on hips there. Now, where are those backing up? Five people all standing, looking at each other. And that, for me, that's very poor. Akim needed a favor. Bahrain has provided him with that. Six free runs. It obviously, it all started with nudging the ball and running hard for two. Well, they are the basics that will drive the head coach of Bahrain appointed last year. Baskar Palai, well, he'll be furious across in the team dugout. Gets us to the end of the power play. We'll have a first commentary change in a moment. Six have been bowled. Oh, man, 48 for one. So it's the a ACC Men's T20 Premier Cup 2024 and I have the man who started the visuals 
started getting involved very first into action, the all and very famous Mikhail. Mikhail, what do you take of the match to start off with? Six overs, 48 for one, Oman, even Steven? Good morning, Pranav. Good morning to all of viewers as well. I want to believe Oman are slightly ahead in this contest at this stage. Watchfully played for a single, and that's what I've liked about the home side. They have just about played sensible cricket. Meanwhile, in the adjacent ground, Kuwait are off to a blistering start. In the first six, they have managed 69 already. That goes to show the kind of form they are in coming back to this game. Oman, despite losing an early wicket, are looking good. There again, get the singles, keep the fielders busy. It is so important that Arke Villiers does well here. Because what you get with Arke Villiers is that cheeky gameplay that he will get into action very soon. The reverse sweeps might come into play, the wrong-footed sweeps. He's a social media guy. Wants to have a lot of action for his social media. Why wouldn't he? And Oman has been held by some very ordinary fielding this morning by Bahrain. Playing that on the up. And that's what the Omani batters have done. They've capitalized on some very, very mediocre fielding. You can't drop catches of Ake Bilyas very early, Pranav. They, held, they started off things right with a wonderful catch of Mohamed Naseem. But then dropping the catch of Ake Bilyas has made it very, very costly. If they don't get the back of Ake Bilyas, they've given him the confidence. They dropped the catch. They gave him six runs in free because of a missed field. And now he's looking lethal. He'll, he's looking dangerous. And once he gets going, it's so difficult to stop him. Short and wide. Plays that towards deep point. Now Satya has been very economical so far. And these are good signs for Bahrain. They need to put the brakes on the scoring. One man I want to talk about is, the, is Kashyap Kumar Prajapati. Consistently, what he does is he, held, he holds on to the other end, keeps the strike rotating, gets those initial starts, and that's where he becomes such an important part of this Omani side. There again, just trying to use the pace and glide it down, shot third. Another very tidy over, only four coming off it, seven gone, it's 52 for one. Right, so the first six overs have uh, predominantly belonged to Oman. This after they were put into bat first, and I'm sure they would have accepted that offer. It's because they managed 52 runs. This is how it all began. A little bit of movement early on, but then Nasim Kushi and Prajapati very nicely found the gaps. Some big hits as well came their way. Kurtzi Nasim Kushi unafraid, stepped down at times. There was hardly any help for the bowlers, despite some overcast conditions. Innovative and audacious as well at times, Nasim Kushi. Found the big hits at ease. And the power play was a lot of power and placement at the same time. Back live. Another single towards long gone. The captain of Bahrain is Haider and he's the one who rotates the resources. And love the intent. He's bowling medium paces from both these sides at the moment. Obviously we have the services of Sarfraz from the Combox end, and that's where it becomes so important. You know, the scoring rate has dropped compared to how it started, and they're trying to take control of this match at the moment. The approach has been very sensible here by the Omani batters. If you can't get the big hits, make sure you rotate the strike. Sadfraz bowls a teasing pace. There again, just keeps it stump to stump. Another one glided towards, rather played towards mid-wicket, beg your pardon. It's been pretty handy from Oman. Can't take it away from them. Because what, what happens is that if they get this base, then comes the power hitters, the likes of Zishan Maksud, Rafiullah, and everybody around them. There again. This time playing it with soft hands. They're looking for the second. They'll settle for one. Very good fielding in the deep. 
Miguel, you're there for the toss. What do you think is a good score on this wicket? Well, Heather Ali at the toss after electing to bowl first said it's 120 is what they're looking at to curtail the opposition. Zishan Maksud, the counter answer to that was 160 is what they're looking. Uh, I honestly want to believe 160 would be a good and a decent score here. Oh, he's picked that up. Don't bother running for that. Just become a viewer in the field. That's because that's gone the distance. That's a massive hit from the bat of Prajapati. Now he's flexing his muscles in the middle. This is what he does. And this is what he does consistently. Kashyap Kumar Prajapati he lines the bowler up. Consistently keeps picking up singles. And that's where the bowler gets into his comfort zone. And there he unleashes something that was right in the stumps on the leg side and launches the big. So six valuable runs coming just when things were looking in control of Bahrain. They're coming. It's been a six. Yeah, good. They're pacing this innings very well. You've got to construct an innings, as you say in cricket. You start besides your end, like the way in which they're picking their shots. Short selection is key. This time, short and wide. Put away towards deep backward point. That's... Played beautifully for another boundary. A 6 and a 4. 10 in 2. This has turned out to be a very good over. 14 runs coming off it. 8 gone. It's 66 for 1. Wonderful shot. It went like a bullet there. Something that came out of the bat of Kashyap Kumar Prajapati. The confidence. The elegance. He's such a stylish player. Always looks to impress the camera the viewers. Pranav, in hindsight, if I'm sitting in that Oman dugout, not a bad toss to lose. After 8, 66 for 1, Oman bat deep. And despite overcast conditions, they've had the best conditions to bat in, looks like. It's overcast conditions, but something that has not been in favor of the bowling side is the wind. Because when you're playing in Oman, the biggest factor for the bowling side is the wind. If you can control that factor in your favor, that's where you can win matches, difficult matches, matches which are not working in your favor, but you can control them. And at the moment, the wind is not blowing. You would see that from the flag right over the Oman Cricket Academy, which we will see in a while. But at the moment, Akebilyas and Kashyap Kumar Prajapati, they're stretching a partnership. 14 runs of the previous of the bottom edge towards the third fielder and he wouldn't mind that Akebilyas he's taken his time but he can explode and at the moment he's just itching to get going now Satya has been by far the most tidy bowler into his third conceded only nine Akebilyas has been slow off the blocks Prajapati just about finding his mojo in the middle there again, just gliding it down to third. Work to do for the field and the deep. I'll tell you what, this partnership is just about finding shape and it's going to turn threatening as well for Bahrain. It's time to be watchful, Mikhail, because this is the over where I feel that Akib might be looking to launch against Satya. And that's where it could be either ways, either it he could take a liking of Satya or he could even walk back. And that's exactly what he's looking to do on this occasion. He's got a lot of bat onto it. There is a sweeper and they're going to be pushing in for the second. Omer Imtia is doing the field and the deep. Very good pick up and throw. Nake Bilyas usually has a strike rate of over 100. But he can take his time. That's because they're off to a good start, Oman. And at the other end, Prajapati is looking good. 33 of 23. In terms of the extras, Bahrain have been tidy, Pranav. Just the one extra this morning. But it's the fielding that's been a little bit of a letdown. That's generally been the case. We were talking about it could be either ways. And I believe that's a catch gone begging. He's looking itchy at the moment. He's looking to launch Akebelias. And this is what you can generally 
fall into the trap of the bowler has been economical you need to take these half chances yes it was difficult he had to put in the big lunge the big dive back live nicely driven once again for a single towards cover sweeper this is good batting by both these batters day 1 of the men's t20 premier cup 2024 we have 24 matches 10 teams and that one spot to play for wow it's a wonderful tournament and getting things right there rakabilia is nudging the ball understanding that satya is bowling one of those spells that he has to watch out for 73 for one at the end of nine and oman are cruising here just to take a look at the batting card of oman put into bat mohammad nasim just took off 18 of 7 uh, played a very loose shot to throw away his wicket and after that akib and prajapati are putting on a very fine partnership the 34 of 24 for prajapati elias 20 of 23 73 for one after nine oman bat deep there's rafiul and nadim kail pratik athavle zishan maksud they can bat till number 8 9 let me tell you abdul majid the left arm orthodox spinner he's a very wily customer let me tell you he'll certainly ask a few questions right on the money ball number 1 talking about bahrain on the previous occasions as well when they've been here fielding has not been their standout asset and bowling has been pretty okay okay i cannot give it to them i cannot take it away from them but batting batting is something that i can seriously talk about they came here for the gcc cup as well and they were a stand outside with the way they exploded with the bat and then it is the captain heather ali he plays a very crucial role in the middle controls the game runs hard and they were a brilliant side to nicely bowled abdul majid abasi the senior statesman in the side while he'll bowl his four quota of four overs with great precision and discipline as well this time just gets a little innovative but he'll not be able to clear sarfraz ali who's at fine it was a wrong footed sweep from arkebelias this is a shot that he's developed in the previous series we had seen him play on a few occasions he's been a little scratchy this morning he's consumed 26 deliveries for his 21 a very unlike arkebelias innings there again nicely bowled just not allowing him any width the room to play shots it's only a matter of time just one ball to half a mark of the first innings and it's only a matter of time that arkebelias explodes it could go either way mikhail it's only a matter of time there again three runs coming off the first over of abdul majid it's been a tidy and a good one 10 gone at the half way stage 76-1 and a water break as well for the players
Right then, we are back after a short drinks break. And it's so essential. Hot and humid conditions here in Oman. 76 for one at the halfway mark of the first innings. And the coach would have had a few words with Akeb Elias with the way he's approached his innings. Imran Javed will come into the attack. He's been an important part. The left arm pacer does love to roll his fingers over the ball consistently. Good start for him. Quick single down to backward point. Something has to give way now for Oman. They need to re-strategize the approach of theirs. They are batting deep and they have a good opportunity of scoring big and that's why one of these two batters in the middle will need to take matter into their own hands and just about step foot on accelerator. Archipelius has been in form. Can't take it away from him. Wonderful line. Beautifully bold. Just outside the off stump. Asking difficult questions to Kashyap Kumar Prajapati. The man and form Kashyap Kumar Prajapati. And he's started off with the right foot ahead. Imran Javed. He's been one of those standout bowlers. Oh yes, just about maintaining the shape on that delivery. Held its line. Imran Javed Anwar. This time, bowled into the pads, worked towards the long gone region. The big hits all of a sudden have disappeared. They'll just look to watch in. They do realize that Imran Javed is a tricky customer and they don't want to allow him to start his spell with a wicket. And obviously, the drinks break. They would like to get the momentum in their favor and then go after the bowling attack. That's something that is going to be happening in this 9.3 overs, the remaining 9.3 overs. The three fielders in the deep, on the on, long gone deep mid wicket and deep backward square leg. Only one inside the circle and that's shot fine. Soft hands, another single, so runs coming in ones at the moment. Imran Javed, three runs of four deliveries. Kashyap Kumar Prajapati, he's been holding on to the pressure that is being built in by an unlikely Archibaldias kind of an innings. And they've been running hard. Not on this occasion, though. I just get the impression the surface may have just gotten a little slow or maybe too paced as well. Because as you take the pace of the delivery, it's not really coming onto the bat the way the batters would like it to come when early on it was hard with a new ball. We'll have to wait and watch, but at the moment, the manner in which both these batters are just about getting their runs just about gives us an indication that playing through the line may not be, be that easy. There again. Just about using the pace, opening the face of the bat, and they'll settle for a single. So runs coming in singles. Five of this over. Good start here for Anwar. 11 gone. It's 81 for one. So that's the bowling approach so far. Ali Daud became that sole wicket so far. But apart from that, everybody has uh, been able to keep things tight here, Mikhail. And that's where Satya obviously being the standout bowler. Look at that economy rate. And even Abdul Majid, one, one over for him, but just three runs. And things have been very tight. I feel from the Omani likes, they have a number in their mind and they're looking to chase that number and that's where this approach can be defined to. Fuller this time gets an outside edge and I'll tell you what when it comes to Abdul Majid Abbasi he's the partnership breaker. I've seen him do that uh, in the World Cup qualifiers as well in Nepal. Uh, what a lovely uh, setup this is by the way in Oman. Two adjacent grounds double headers on both the 
grounds as well. It's just wonderful to be calling cricket. Another single. He needs to get going now here. Arkabilia has just over eight overs to go. And wonderful visuals. Mikhail, the all important. And Pranav Mehta, that's me. So thank you to the production crew for showing us. And what an incredible tournament I'll be witnessing here, Mikhail. Indeed. And some in the background, Andrew Lennart as well was there. And that's been picked up. He waited for it and that disappears and goes into the roads as well. This was coming. Archibillas breaks the shackles and a much needed six and the release of pressure as well. He's played a lot of big shots in the last few months and this is the sign for him to be unleashing. What a wonderful strike, hitting it all the way. And that ball will have to be brought back from the roads. It's gone onto the roads. Somebody would like to keep it as a souvenir. Why not? What a shot. Power hit there. Never easy playing across the line. Something that Akebillas has achieved just a couple of months ago. The fastest 100 in the T10 format. In the D10 format, the fastest 100. And that came with a lot of maximums. And I was commentating in that match. None of the six was small. Those were sixes, which would be six on any ground. Uh, no matter the size, they were huge, humongous sixes. And that's what you get with Archibillas. If he cuts loose, he just keeps going. High time, both the bad just cut loose. Yo, what a delivery. Invited the batter into the shot. And Abdul Majid, as we spoke about being the partnership breaker, gets his man. This is very fine bowling and great glove work as well behind the wickets by Imran Bhatt. What a time. Just when Oman was looking to cut loose and take control of the situations, Bahrain have struck back and they've got that all-important wicket of Kachyap Kumar Prajapati here. And this could very well bring in the captain, the left-hander, Sushan Maksud, into the equation. So, starting over the front foot, perfect from most of the Bahraini bowlers. Bowling just behind the line and stumping is never going to be an equation because Kashyap never looked to make it back. He'll have to walk back. 38 of 30 for him. Omar 90 for one. Just like the way it went wide of the crease. A little bit of turn on that. Invited the batter. Just committed way too much there, Prajapati. And lovely stumping by Imran Bhatt as well. You've got to give it to Abdul Majid Abbasi. He always brings in those wicket-taking deliveries in crisis situations. Yes, Oman has lost a wicket here, Mikhail. But when they're watching the replay, they will have a big smile on their face considering that this man is going to be bowling in the second innings. And he's a big turner of the ball. The left-arm spinner who's going to be impressing the lots with his bat. One of the top-ranking all-rounders in the world. I believe he's at number three, number four, if, a, if not at number five. And Zishan Maksud will come into the equation. Initially, was recognized because of his catching ability in the World Cup. Diving across 100 effort at covers. And ever since, he's never looked back. Zishan Maksud, he's an entertainer. Smiles. He has some Bhangra skills which he has to offer when he's bowling. Uh, he's mercurial to the side, let me tell you. Zishan Maksud up against Abdul Majid Abbasi. Two very shrewd operators in the middle, let me tell you. So after being hit for a six, it's a very good comeback by Abdul. Nine runs and a wicket. After 12, it's 90 for two. So that's the story so far for Oman. Kashyap Kumar Prajapati has just departed. It was Mohammed Naseem Khushi who was the first one to depart. And Zishan Maksud has just joined the likes of the man who's starting to explode. He's just parking at the moment. Akeb Ilyas Sulheri, a dynamic. He's been the backbone of Oman cricket 
at number three for the last few years, consistently scoring runs. He's got runs this uh, so this morning as well here at the Oman Cricket Academy. But something that he's still not happy about because the strike rate is just around 100. And he would like to finish it somewhere around 150, 160. That's his general strike rate when he plays a big knock. He's come with intent. The intent is to play a long innings. And that is where he could be very, very lethal. Did take some time to start. And now he's looking lethal. And to stop him from doing that, it is Imran Javed. Imran Javed and were the left arm pace up. Rotating strike beautifully. Looking for two. Will get it easily. Archibillas, what do you take of Archibillas? The way he's approached his innings. Well, he's, he's shown great composure. Never easy when you're not really getting bat to ball early on. You tend to throw away your wicket, but he's just take a look at that wicket once again. Prajapati just about dancing down the wicket to be completely bamboozled by the spin and turn of Abdul Majid Abbasi. Coming back to Akebilias. He's just about shown great concentration. There again, just trying to glide it down third. Nicely bowled. You don't lose patience. And that's the key when you're not getting back to ball. Uh, it's what I'm trying to say when it comes to Akebilias. Just needs to say that this is something that you get with Imran Javed. Angling it away, holding the line to the right hander. What a bowler. And he's holding it tight here against Oman, keeping things tight. Had Anwar collected that in his run up, it would have been a close call as well at the bowler's end. That brings Maksud and Strike, who's still to get off the mark. Left right combination here will certainly keep the fielders also busy and on their toes. But Imran Javid Anwar has begun well into his second. And it looks like the clouds may just about open up as well. We've had gloomy conditions this morning. The sun has disappeared. Worked it towards shot fine. The clouds have come in to watch the game. It's a thriller. Two wonderful games on adjacent grounds of the Oman Cricket Academy. Oval one. It is Bahrain versus Oman. And what a contest are we witnessing here. On the other ground, it is UAE versus Kuwait, where Kuwait started off dominating in dominating fashion, serious domination against the star studded UAE side. Here again, quick single. Fielders are standing at the edge of the 30-yard circle. Makes it easier for the batter. Play with soft hands, touch and run. And the last thing you want at this venue is rain. The anthem would be rain, rain, go away, Pranav. Come again another day. As simple as that. No wind whatsoever here at the Oman Cricket Academy. Stagnant flags. And that's the sign of possible rain. Happy to rotate the strike at the moment. He's pushing in Zishan Maksud. Not one of those quickest runners, but he's an incredible striker. 13 was done. 96 for 2, Oman. Satya has been the pick of the bowlers. 15 runs in his three overs and an economy of five. Ali Dawood with that wicket very early. He still has uh, two overs to go. 12 for one for him. And uh, Abdul Majid. Well, he certainly will make an impact. Sarfra is introduced into the attack. And just the right time to introduce my co-commentator as well, with whom I've been sharing the mic after a very long time, Andrew Leonard. Andrew, very good morning. Yeah, very good morning, Mikhail. Good morning, everyone watching all around the world. 
live on the ACC YouTube channel, Fan Code in India, and then back in Nepal, live on the television there in Kantapur. Really good to see that great initiative. We'll see Nepal, the reigning champions, come into action. It's interesting, isn't it, Mikhail? There's a couple of different form lines in this competition. This time, just plays it down the ground towards long off for another single. There's firstly the ACC Premier Cup from last year, which was in a different format, which is a 10-team comp. But then there's also the ICC Men's T20 World Cup Asia qualifier. Uh, both of those events were both hosted in Nepal. That was an eight-team event. Looks to go big, almost dragged that on. Very lucky, but they'll steal a single. Yeah, I think it's going to be given as boys. Missed everything. Big swing and a miss from Zishan Maksud. He's trying to get Oman going. You can understand why, because those projected scores, not where the captain of Oman would like. A surprise for me has been these two medium pacers. They've just been allowed to bowl, haven't they? Both been reasonably economical. This time, Akebilia looks to go big. Hits it behind deep square leg, and that should go the distance as well. Yes, it does. Akib Ilyas is just about freeing his arms, and that's a very good shot. Well, how badly needed was this for Oman? Desperate, and in fact, the 100 comes up in the 14th over. He can still get up north of that 160, no doubt, but they're going to need Akib Ilyas to get going. He's battled out there, he's been dropped, he's been missed, he really hasn't looked to himself, and for the first time in his innings, his strike rate now gets above 100. This time through the offside, through the extra cover region. Exquisite. Look at the power and placement. Archibillas is just about turning it on in the middle. And he's finding his mojo as well. Well, the captain is absolutely furious. He's at long off and he is shouting at almost every one of his teammates. The angles are all wrong here. Your cover sweeper has to be a cover. Look where he is. He's almost a deep point. He's in completely the wrong position, particularly because there's two men behind square on the offside, thirds in the circle, backward points in the circle, angles wrong. This time plays it towards third. Sensible cricket, the 50 comes up as well for Akebilyas. He raises his bat in style. What a way to start the competition. He's the man in form. He's the talismanic cricketer. And yet again, he proves his worth in the middle. Well, that's a funny old game, Mikhail, isn't it? Because he has looked completely out of form for the vast majority of this innings. A little salvo to close the 14th over. 6-4-4 four, four has got him to that landmark of 50. But in reality, he probably should have been caught when he was on just one. He's still there, though, the 31-year-old. It's a 8th T20i 50. He's just gone past the 1,000 run marker prior to this match today. And he's going to cash in on this hot streak of form. Lots of scores against Namibia. Got to double figures in all five games. Was in the wickets too. And it's back-to-back -back T20i 50s. The last one against Namibia five days ago. And now starts the ACC Premier Cup in some style. But he's had to battle to get there. Really didn't look himself for much of the innings. It's come off 42 deliveries. Two fours, two sixes. And three of those boundaries came from the last three consecutive deliveries. It shows you just how much he has battled. But now, somehow, a man of a platform, probably thinking north of 170. If they can, they want at least 10 and over from here, Mikel. With the kind of batting depth they have, Andrew, quite certainly, 170 is what they should be aiming at. And a good point that you mentioned, the battle of Akebilyas in the middle, in all of it, despite looking scratchy, he did not throw it away. After that early reprieve, Sarfraz Ali there, the fielder in question who dropped his catch. And after that, it's been no looking back for Akib Elias. Ali Dawood has been brought into the attack. Bahrain in search of a wicket. Quick single. Not quite sure what was happening between Akib Elias and, and the standing umpire, but it was quite animated, wasn't it? The two were remonstrating between each other. I'm not sure, was it uh, something to do? I think it's S. Ravi, the umpire at the far end. But he really was laying down the law to Aki Bilyas in no uncertain terms. Not exactly sure what this is about. Had quite a discussion there. <laughs> You'd want to maybe just get that bad talking. 
Drifting it down, leg soft hands, run the quick first run very fast, but they'll settle for one. Yeah, let's think about these two groups here, Mikhail. We've got two groups of five. It's a pretty simple structure, four group games each. This for me, though, an absolute group of death. Okay, Cambodia, certainly the underdogs of the whole tournament. They're the lowest ranked by a distance, 42nd in the world. But if you look at the rest of Group B, UAE and Oman, Kuwait and Bahrain. Uh, he's just trying to pick that up, but was a straying down leg. Umpire is not entrusted, Esravi. There's not a lot between them, is there? Kuwait and Bahrain, 26th and 27th in the world. UAE and Oman, 16th and 18th. Well, I'll tell you something. That looked very close to me. The height, the only thing that's going to save... Not exactly sure what's happened here because one of the Bahrain fielders is laid up, sprawled across the turf like he's just been floored by a knockout punch. <laughs> just wonder, is it a little bit of illness or injury? I don't think it was something immediately obvious here. Well, it's very innocuous, isn't it? He's gone down. And he's just never got up. Is it a bit of cramp, maybe? Something in the hamstring, Mikhail? Some kind of spasm or cramps. Remember, you've got to keep hydrating yourself. And the physio is at work. It's very hot, despite being overcast conditions. The heat can be very oppressive. Yeah, well the, the official humidity today is 33%, but it felt a lot more than that coming it up, didn't it? Very muggy, our drive through those beautiful mountains. The wind, the breeze is pretty hot. When the gale of breeze is blowing across, you can feel the heat wave as well. Hundred and sixteen for two in the fifteenth over. Oman, after putting to uh, been put into bat, have uh, done reasonably well, and they should be eyeing something close to 160, 170. Andrew, that's exactly what Zishan was eyeing at the toss. Yeah, I just want to talk a little bit more about about the groups here, and and really the the challenge for this group B with just two teams going through from each of the five team groups. We see Cambodia certainly the ones that. You know, really, they're here for the experience. 42nd in the world. They're going to have a lot of work to do to challenge. But then if you look at UAE and Oman, and again, you look at the form lines. Oman, champions of the Asia qualifier for the ICC T20 World Cup. Nepal, the other side, to go through. But they were third in the last ACC Premier Cup. Oman, excuse me, UAE, second. And then back in the, the Asia qualifier, fourth. So really, there's a few good form lines there to take a look at. But Kuwait and Bahrain, very capable on their day. Absolutely. I watched them in recent years. These teams have a very strong top order and not so good news for Bahrain at the moment. One of the players will have to walk back. Looks like he may have just about pulled the muscle and that limp in his walk quite certainly suggests that uh, he is struggling in the middle. We'll have to wait and watch who's going to come in place of him. Meanwhile, back live, Ali Dawood into his third. One of the most successful bowlers this morning for Bahrain. Only two bowlers amongst wickets. Ali, one of them. Arke Bilyas batting on a well-made 53. He's just about changed gears in the middle. And Zishan Maksud came in after the fall of uh, Prajapati's wicket. So, Oman looking good. They bat deep. Still quite a few batters to come. You have... Uh, Khalid Kale, Rafiullah, Mohammad Nadim. Meanwhile, Ali Dawood into his fourth delivery in his third over. Taken on the full, another single towards long gone. Yeah, pretty sure. We will need a check because we, we've got a discrepancy with the numbers in our team sheet. Pretty sure it's Sohel Ahmed, Mikhail, who's gone off with what? Well, for something that was so innocuous, it looks like a pretty serious injury, doesn't it? And certainly the, the batting... Ability of Ahmed will be something that Bahrain would have wanted to utilize. It's not a concussion injury, so he won't be allowed a, a batting replacement. Bahrain may need to chase this with 10 men. 
and uh, that's the problem for the bowling side at the moment much better delivery uh, Soel Ahmed is a very fine batter up the order and if he'll not be able to make it when they come out to chase that target it'll be a big blow to Bahrain's plans at the moment they're already under the caution playing catch up that's because Oman uh, just about made full use of the invitation to bat first projected score to 159 it's those deliveries there, the, the ones that just angle in Taki Bilias. It certainly feels like it's the most economical line for the bowlers to bowl. That gets us to the end of the 15th, 119 for two. I would just hold in his shoulder a touch. It's been a strange innings, hasn't it, for Aki Bilias, a scratchy one, not really his stereotypical one. We're just talking about that Group B and, and the difficulty of it, Kuwait are putting it right up to UAE. You can just see in the distance there, that's the, the second oval. 118 for two with 13 overs gone. They look well on track, Mikhail, to post 180 plus. That won't be easy for UAE to chase down, particularly if Mohamed Wazim doesn't get a good one. Oh, fair enough point, uh, Andrew. Oh, I just happened to look at the UAE squad, some new names, and that'll make it very interesting for them as well. A lot will depend on the top order, largely aided by their captain, Mohamed Wasim. But yes, Kuwait, time and again, are putting on a show in the middle. Oh, he's picked that up from outside off. Straight to the field, uh, deep backward square leg. He'll get a single for that, Ilyas. Yeah, it looks like Rizwan's going to bowl maybe over 16 and 18. Just wonder who's going to be used at the death now for Bahrain. Still just two overs of the left arm spinner used. It would have felt that maybe 16 and 18 made more sense for him to bowl. And the only reason maybe he would have been taken off is uh, because you have Zishan Maksud at the other end as well. But yeah, ideally you'd not want to give it to a spinner in the death overs. But he's been their go-to man in recent years. Worked away. What do you think of this, this modern trend of matchups? It almost seems to me to starting to be becoming a little overplayed in terms of surely your best bowler is still your best bowler, even if they're in theory spinning the ball back into the left-hander. And also, Andrew, just coming back to T20 cricket, we don't see too many left-arm orthodox spinners turning the ball these days. You get to see them to bowl with the arm. You get to see them to bowl the straighter deliveries, the drifters. So there is variation that comes into play as well. Square obviously that entire left arm spinner to a left handed batter gets negated as well. Yeah, good skills here from Rizwan. Think this is out of the back of the hand. Definite slower ball. Ilias, even despite that surge of three boundaries, still not finding the rhythm. Zishan Maksud taking a little while to get going as he often does. These are, are critical moments of the game. Keep them to less than 10 runs per over. Bahrain could be chasing 160. And the way they bat, it is a little hit or miss at times. But eight runs per over, I don't think it will concern them hugely. That's been picked up, played towards the long gone region. Heather Ali doing the fielding there. Really good skills though, again, I think this time it might be the off cutter, maybe the knuckle ball even out of the front of the hand. He's showing his full repertoire, taking the pace off nicely. Andrew, what do you make of the surface? You did we did see a few change ups and that's where batting gets a little difficult. You feel that this pitch may just be on the slower side? To me it looks really good, Mikhail. Obviously, you need in the modern game your, your change-ups. You cannot bowl six deliveries at the same pace, whether you're a spinner or a seamer. And that's what Rizwan is showing us here, all his skills. But it looked like a true surface. There was good carry, good bounce, good pace in it. We thought the reason to bowl first was the overhead conditions. We thought it might swing about a bit at 10 a.m. It hasn't really. I'm not sure Oman are where they need to be right now. And they do have a history of starting tournaments slowly. Need to be careful. Very nicely bowled. Five singles coming off this over. This is a very fine bowling performance where it is one. 16 gone, it's 124 for two. 
Yeah, I think more and more now in, in the modern T20 game, you want this ability to have six bowlers. And that's what Bahrain have. They probably actually have a seventh up their sleeve as well. That's what Oman will have too. But as a consequence, it means that they've got lots of options going into the final four overs here. I just wonder, is it a, a slight mistake not giving Abdul Majid an over more? I'm not saying he necessarily had to bowl his four. Virapur Thiran, who's been outstanding, he's only bowled 3-2. Maybe we might see four different bowlers bowl these final four overs. Four remain. Can Oman get going? Takes it on the full, plays it towards the mid-wicket region. He wants a second run. Akabilia sent back by his skipper. Done a lot of Oman's cricket over the last three or four years, all of their ICC events, the ACC events. And, and this is a, a phase of the game where I think they struggle. They're running between the wickets. When Zishan Maksud is out there, he's a fine player. He's one of the best on the associate circuit. A brilliant, wily left-arm spin bowler. And he can be a very, very attacking batter. But his running between the wickets at this stage is not good enough. It can be really harmful. And you think about all that batting depth that they have. Oh man, in danger maybe of only using four or five batters here. Unless they get going, they're on track for 160. I'm not convinced it's enough, Michaela. I might be proven wrong. Now you have a fair enough point. With the sporting wicket and offer, anything is possible in the chase as well. Gives the charge. There again, good death bowling. This could be close. A direct hit and he could be gone. A direct hit and this will certainly be referred up. Is Dishan Maksud struggling? He feels he's made it. But this is going to be a close call. That's because a direct hit will always land the fielding side at an advantageous situation. I think he's in trouble. I think he could be gone here, Mikhail, for two reasons. One, he was a little slow off the mark, and two, he had to run around the bowler a little bit. Bowler didn't do anything wrong. He was just holding his line. So Ilias had to jink a little bit to his left. It was difficult to tell if the stumps had been hit at first. It might have just been the top of the stumps that were flicked. But we have gone upstairs. I think this could be gone. My initial instinct was that, was Aki Bilyas, excuse me, Sishan Maksud able to get the afterburners on enough to get home? Mid-off fielder didn't pick it up particularly swiftly. Well, here we go. You'll see here, with good length delivery right into the block hole. Just that little bit of a moment off the turf is going to allow him to get home the throw if that was right at the base of the stumps i think it would have been gone but what's happened we might need one more look at it i think what's happened it's slowed down because it's a one bounce throw that's why it felt like it took a long time to hit the stumps and as a consequence maksud's got home and also maksud while playing that shot was way outside his crease so he was already out and on the move but this could be also a situation where a few frames may come into account. We'll have to go slower with the frames to see how close was that. We'll still await confirmation. Yeah, I reckon if that throw goes right at the base of the stumps, that's out. But what's happened is it, the throw was miles short. It's actually done. It's been a bit fortunate to hit the top of the stumps. Probably landed six or seven yards shy of where he was aiming. Just going to see if we can pull that back so that poor old Vinay Kumar Jha hasn't got much of a look at it there. It is, again, the first morning of the tournament. The technology is new for both the production team and for the umpires, so we'll just ask for a little bit of patience. I think he's got home, Mikhail. What do you reckon? I agree with you. Lenny, it looks like Maksud may have just crossed the line in time. And as you rightly pointed out, had that throw been at the base of the stumps, bit more quicker, bit more firm. That would have easily had him in trouble. This time we'll get a better idea. Oh, he's made it. He's just about made it. This is good running. I'll tell you something, it's only just, isn't it? It really is. He's a wily character, Zishan Maksud. He's, he's one of my very favourite cricketers on the associate circuit. But it really is. It's probably only by three inches, two inches that he's got home. And good technique. He's got the full outstretched bat run in. Again, I repeat, if that throw was more towards the base of the stumps, that would have been gone. Running between the wickets, it's an issue for Oman. Not too sure if that was the quickest throw as well. Nevertheless, Zishan Maksud may just survive here. And soon after that call, he quickly turned back and told his partner that 
he felt he was comfortably in well this is a game of margins and just about makes it in over there oman will need to move on from here we still await confirmation from the third empire with regard to this decision bahrain after being a little mediocre in the field shows some brilliance with that direct hint yeah i think the the reason we've had to use this angle just didn't quite capture it from the the fixed camera i think that's the key frame there you can see the back clearly over the line before the ball has cannoned into the stumps so credit to the the mid off fielder who's affected the direct hit but not quite swiftly enough yeah, it's definitely vinay kumar is asking for another angle now this is just the one that we have definitely something that oman there's no magical solution is there it's an aging team it's been an aging team for quite a while if you look at the starting 11 today you have okay a little bit of youth in the in the top order with prajapati at 28 nashim kushi 41 akib elias 31 zishan maksud 36 mohammed adim is 41 there's the green light indicating we're good to go athavele and rafiola had a bit of youth at 26 and 27 but then Shaquille Ahmed and Bilal Khan the wrong side at 352 it's not a young side but I will say one thing it's a side that keeps themselves very fit and certainly the, the work that the, the team physio does with them and all of the the setup that Oman cricket have in place very impressive so we're ready to continue after what feels like a long break Oman still wanting to get north of that 160 right and Andrew may I add uh, about the Oman team like you mentioned they are an aging side but one good thing for them is they have been a performing side over a period of time that's helping their cause oh he's picked that up one bounce to the field at deep and wicket captain heather ali ah oh. again this is this is really poor sorry mikel this is really poor running between the wickets this is very nearly what was a regulation single very nearly turned it into a run out chance uh, and, and for me it's it's also about the intent it's about the statement that you make when you're running between the wickets rather than him smashing that to deep midwicket sprinting the first putting pressure on the fielder he's turned it around the other way nearly created a, a run out opportunity oh he chipped that in the air mid on coming around it but it just falls between two i just felt there was a little bit of confusion as who's going to take it mid off running towards it long gone coming in and both of them just about get into ball watching mode Well, Ali Dawood's not happy. He really isn't happy at all here, and you can understand why. This is a chance. Both mid-off or long on could have caught this, and they end up staring each other in the eye, saying, "After you, sir." And annoyingly for the captain, it's the skipper himself, Hyder Ali and Junaid Aziz. One of them should have got there. Neither did. And the end result's a single. A little bit of a calamitous over this one. All happening. Ideally it was Junaid Aziz's catch because he was coming into the ball another single towards mid wicket yeah, Daywood's impressed me bowled really nicely no shortage of pace and up front he just moved the ball about a little bit and now he's he's showing his death skills nicely he'll be bowled out there'll be three to remain after this even to get to 160 they'll need to have a, a bit of a flourish to the finish. He's and Maxud is going to change his bat and also is Aki Bilias. So the two veterans, the two experienced hands, something not happy between the pair of them. Anything to change gears, Andrew? Change your bat, change gears, get some runs. Cuz all of a sudden things have gone quiet. Uh, there you can see Zishan Maxud. 8 and 12. It's not been able to get going. very nicely bowled it's been a very fine bowling performance here by ali dawood in his four he's conceded only 23 and taken a wicket as well six runs of his final over 17 gone 18 deliveries left it's 130 for two you take that every day of the week if you're opening the bowling and bowling one of the death overs one of the last four that's an excellent effort and that over was outstanding deserved a wicket could have had two 
didn't get it in the end. You know, man, need to be careful here. They really do. If Bahrain could finish well, finish with three good overs, it's going to be Rizwan uh, to bowl his fourth and final. Still no sign of the left arm spinner for his third. I just wonder, 155, 150. Well, that could be very chaseable. 30 and 18 deliveries, always easy in T20 format. Oh, he's picked that. He's drilled it over mid-wicket. He's bludgeoned it. It'll go to the adjacent ground. It'll just about go to a UAE fielder. But that's how Zishan Maksud plays when he hits the big ones. Well, that's six on both grounds. Six on over one and six on over two. What a strike. Finally, Maksud bursts to life. Well, the change of bat has worked, hasn't it? One ball to see it in. And then one out to the ground, not just over the rope here, an oval one, over the rope and oval two. What a strike. An evasive action needed. Who's that over there? Basil Amid, is it? There again, once again, looks to go downtown. Does not quite middle it. What a power hit. Mikhail, what happens if it's caught on the other field? What, what do the laws of cricket say there? Still six, isn't it? I'll just hand it back. <laughs> <laughs> Look out on the other field. You, just as well there wasn't a ball going on in the other pitch at the, at the same time. It's a great thing about this venue, something I love. So well designed, every aspect thought of. We've got a brilliant commentary position here. Great dressing room facilities for both venues. World class here in Muscat. This time, this could be very close as well. The finger goes up. Archibillas will have to walk back. Rizwan strikes in his fourth. Playing across the line. So S. Ravi feels that would have been hitting middle stump. Well, this is quite simply three letters. One word, O-U-T. This is out. It's plum as can be. Aki Billy has gone for 62. He thuds the pads in frustration. Maybe not his best innings, but still a very fine contribution. He's gone for 62. Get one more look at the replay. Archibillas departs for 62. Look to play across the line and that looked right in front. No hesitation there for Rambo Kuela. We'll take a look at Aki Billias. Not often you'll see a batter walk for an LBW. But he barely even looked back. He knew he was as plumb as could be. Rafiola's going to be sent in up the order. Big change here. He was initially listed at number eight. He's going to come in at number five. That's firmly struck to us long off. He's off the mark. I've watched him bat in uh, the domestic competitions, uh, Lenny Rafiola. He can hit really long sixes. Very fine all round, a very fine talent. What a player to have in the middle overs. And again, this is a, a case of, of Khalid Kale and Mohammed Nadim probably not quite having that power that they'd like right now. I think it's also an indication that Dilip Mendes, the head coach of Oman, is not where he'd like to be. No, they're running the first run fast, but they'll only have to settle for a single. Pratik Atavale as well, keeper batter, opening in the World Cup qualifiers a few months back, and uh, now may have just lost position in his batting order. Quite certainly, you can also maybe get an indication that Oman is experimenting a bit in the lead up to the World Cup, uh, Lenny? I think the last place you want to experiment is in cutthroat competitive associate cricket like the ACC Men's Premier Cup here you're watching. They've had five games against Namibia, really good prep, all at this venue. I think they've settled on what they want. Oh, he goes aerial. I'm not quite sure he's middle it. Oh, he has! He may not have timed it well, but that's gone the distance because he's got a lot of power behind it. That's another power hit. A six to end the over, a six all through. What a shot. Well, this is crazy. Just playing crazy because he has not got anywhere near this. It's a little leg cutter. And somehow he has muscled it. Muscled it all the way for a big maximum. Your initial instinct is that's going to be caught at long off, isn't it? But that's why Rafiola has been sent in up the order. Gets us to the end of the 18th. 145 for three. 
What a strike that was. Completely off position there. <laughs> and somehow he manages to get a six over long off. A batting card, all top four batters into double figures. Arkebilia has got to 62 or 53. He held fourth, was the anchor. Scratchy to start off with, but somehow managed to pull, al pull along. Prajapati looked good, 38 for 30. Uh, just quickly, coming back to the point of experimentation, the reason why I asked you is that this is for the first time that Oman went in with Nasim Kushi as an opener. He hasn't really opened in the previous tournaments. They've just had Namibia series. They, they tested him out at the top, and he did pretty well. So th I think they've, they've decided that's what they want. Verappen in for his last. Now, this is a risk. Just medium pace. Again, the keeper back. Akibilius is a slightly shorter side on the leg side. It certainly just feels that little bit shorter because we're over as we look out from the media box to the right of the square. That's where he'll be targeting despite the fact that long on, deep mid-wicket and deep backward square are out. Needs a couple of maximums in this over, you sense. This time, he's played it towards long off and it's been put down and parried away for a four as well. Captain Hali either lets it go. That's been the story this morning for Bahrain. They've not been able to pouch their catches. It's been a story of butterfingers. Well, yeah, burst through the hands and I think it's one bounce four after that. Certainly, as catches come at long off or long on, this is regulation. Should have been taken. Okay, it's out of the screws from Zishan Maksud, but it's put down. And again, he pumps this one down the ground. Should be a second. Maksud will get back. The throw is errant. This isn't where Bahrain should be, given their performance. They catch Aki Vinyas on one. They take this catch of Zishan Maksud. It's a different game. Completely different ball game. Big, big moments in the field. Big moments, as quite rightly pointed out. You don't drop catches of big batters. This time, he's played it over covers. That's a very fine hit. Position himself inside out. Fuller delivery. And he punishes. You drop catches to Maksud, you pay for it. It's not just the drop catches that are being punished, Mikhail. It's also strategic missteps. They had to get Verappen's overs done prior to the death. Cannot bowl at this pace with no variation. At the death, you get away with it in overs sort of 7 through 11. And that's what he did. He bowled three overs for just 15. Now he's bowled three legal deliveries, gone for 11. Big pressure on the medium pacer. This time goes down on one knee, just over the fielder at square leg. So this has been a very eventful over. Already 12 runs coming off it. And the reason he's gone for that stroke there is deep extra coverage just dropped back. And the man at deep backward square had come up in the circle. He got it over his head, but with no real timing. So it'll just be a single. You'd really expect now, Rafiola, he's going to be thinking long on, cow corner. How can I get two boundaries from the last two deliveries of Verappen? Fuller delivery. Just tried to overhit it. Going too hard at it. Manages a single. He'll retain strike in the final six deliveries. Beg your pardon. We have another delivery to go courtesy. That wide of the very first ball. And Verappen has got away with one there. Rafiola got that into the slot. He's just missed out. He thought it is bad in frustration. The non-striker's end. Here comes his final delivery. This time, very sensible cricket. Shot and wide. Just about opens the blade. Gets another boundary. Zishan Maksu, the captain, once again showing how important and dangerous he can be in the death overs. 17 from the over. And just as Bahrain have controlled the initial stages of the death, well, that's a pour over. It really wasn't necessarily good strategically as an option. Or well implemented either. 19 ball, 162 for three. And now a man thinking 175, 180 with a fl final flourish. Bahrain only themselves to blame. Missteps in the field, missteps from the captain too. Ordinary outing in the field here for Bahrain. They've just about let things slip out of their hands. And that's why they're in a position where they're playing catch-up. And now the final over to be bowled by Sarfaraz, who's gone for runs. He's conceded 39 is in his three. And he's up against Rafiola. These six deliveries will certainly be eventful. Can Oman provide the finishing touches? 
and get to a position of strength we'll get to know in the next six deliveries on the pads this could be close a direct hit and he could be gone but he finds the batter well, he's actually hit him in the helmet he apologizes it was a full throw from about two yards from point blank range thank god he is wearing a helmet and I think rightly the umpires are going to ask for a concussion check. This is nasty. It could have been a lot worse. Didn't know where the ball had gone. Sprinted through for the single. Oh dear. Not nice to see. We'll see the Oman team physio. I think luckily it's a glancing blow. That could have been the nasty part. The back of the head where there isn't much protection and an immediate apology. No intent. He's looking to run him out. And the physio's happy that he's okay. He's passed a, a quick concussion check and he's good to go. And the good news for Oman is that Zishan Maksud is back on strike for the remaining five deliveries. You have a deep mid-wicket, a long on, a deep square leg, fine inside the circle, short third. Point, backward point, ex deep extra cover and a long off. This is going to be a very, very interesting next five deliveries. There again, plays it towards square leg. He's running the first run fast. He wants to retain strike. And he'll get that comfortably. Again, you just think of the way in which the skipper has rotated his bowlers here. He's ended up with two military medium operators bowling the 19th and 20th, the key overs. And I think that's a byproduct of not bowling his left arm spinner out. He's bowled two overs, one for 12, remember. And I think if you look at this innings, not being brilliantly managed by Bahrain. This time he's picked it. And picked it in style as well. Into the left-handed batter. Accepted by Zishan Maksud. And he just goes in with the angle to get another home run. Well, I hate to say I told you so, Mikhail, but this is a byproduct of bowling. Two guys who might get away with things in those overs 6 to 12, but are unlikely to go unpunished at the death. It's very friendly pace angling in. Hammered away for 6. Good cameo from Maksud now. Full of this time, he'll get a single to us long off, and that brings Rafiul on strike. Zishan <laughs> just wants to get to the other end. Well, I tell you, he's got away with this one. That could have been drilled through extra cover. Bottom man could have come through, found the gap between long on and, and deep mid wicket. Fielders now flying everywhere. Bahrain being run ragged. Remember, we felt Oman might do well to get to 160. They've soared past that. They'd like 180 now if they can with two deliveries left. Nicely bowled right underneath the bat. Another single towards long on. That'll bring us to the final delivery. Well, the home side quite certainly has a good measure of the conditions and the surface. Never unfazed by that run rate of theirs through this innings and they have uh, managed to get to 170+. plus. Unless there's an injury we haven't seen. Imran Anwar has also only bowled two overs. Cannot understand the tactics. That's one chipped over. Backward point. That'll go for four. What a way to end this innings. Zishan Maksud plays another cameo. He moves to 45 of 25. Rather finishes. Oman finish on 177 for three. And this has been a very fine batting effort. This after Bahrain put them into bat. Well, yeah, brilliant finish uh, from Zishan Maksud. He's managed to slash that away for four. Oh, Bahrain, what have you done with your bowling choices? I think you were in this contest for the vast majority of that innings, and you've just allowed Oman to slip away. The last three overs have gone for 15, for 17, and now the final over, it goes for 15. So a real final flourish from Oman from the hosts the end of 17 they were just 130 for two but they picked up 47 off the last three overs I think that could well end up being the difference between these sides good contributions from Prajapati from Zishan Maksud and from the top run scorer Aki Bilyas and the pick of the bowlers for me well two of them only bowled two overs Abdul Majid and Imran Anwar, the two left armers, bowled nicely. Ali Daywood bowled excellently up the top as well. But very expensive from Rizwan Butt, Vera Pirathiran, and Safraz Ali, four overs, none for 53.
So it's going to be 178 required to win for Bahrain. They're still in this contest, absolutely. I'll give you a quick update from across the other side of us as well as UAE are being taken to task by Kuwait. You still have two overs left, 166 for seven. UAE are in the wickets over there. Let's get a look at the best of this uh, first innings. Started with a friendly wide outside the off stump before Prajapati was the one to really get things going alongside a very dynamic and quick innings from Nassim Kushi. He hit three boundaries and just seven balls, 18 off seven for him, including some innovation. One scooped over his shoulder. That was his dismissal, though. Smashed it a mile into the sky where he was held by Varapathan out at deep backward square. The big moment, the first of two punishing drop catches. There was a third half chance in there. Aki Bilyas dropped on one before he started to get into gear. Only hit four boundaries, though, in his 53 deliveries. That was the wicket of Prajapati. Good piece of stumping from Imran Ali Butt. And then the boundary started to come for Aki Vilyas. Hit three and three consecutive balls before Zishan Maksud's late cameo. Just 25 deliveries he faced. That was the dismissal of Vilyas there. Trapped LBW before a monstrous six down the ground from Rafiola, who was promoted up the order. And a nice flourish from Maksud at the end, but he too was dropped. He was dropped on 17. So if you add up the drops, they cost plenty of runs. The drop of Maksud cost 28, and the drop of Aki Bilyas cost 61. And that could well be very painful at the tail of the tape at the end. Really good finish from Zishan Maksud, including that very final delivery being slashed away for a boundary. So that'll wrap up our coverage from the first inning. Zishan Maksud, probably the happier of the two captains. We think it's above par by maybe... 10 or 15, something in that region. But Bahrain have some very dangerous hitters. What can they do in the chase? Do come back and join us for the second innings where Bahrain will need 178 to win and pull off an upset on the very first morning. We'll see you then.
what an incredible start have we had to the ACC Men's T20 Premier Cup 2024 here at the Oman Cricket Academy. It all started with Oman batting first and piling on 177 for the loss of three wickets. It was that man, Ake Bilyas, who took his time, spent some quality time on the wicket, and he was willing to explode. And just when he was looking to take things into his hands, he had to depart at 62 or 53. But then the captain, the captain entertaining Zishan Maksud did not disappoint. 45 of 25 for him, and he stayed not out along with Rafiullah towards the end. Kashyap Kumar Prajapati also put in a valuable contribution there. Well, the bowling, only five extras. Nevertheless, something was amiss in the middle, and that's why with a lot of drop catches, the bowlers were not helped as well by some ordinary fielding. Ali Dawood was impressive, 23 for one in his four. So was uh, Abdul Majid, one for 12, but he got only two overs to bowl. Otherwise, it's been that kind of a bowling performance where quite a few bowlers have gone over 10 and over 7 and over. And that's where Oman capitalized. Only three wickets to fall. One at 26. But after that, it is no looking back. And this means that Bahrain are in hot pursuit of 178 and 120 deliveries. And they'll have to get their runs at 9 and over. Which means the first six overs, Pranav, will be key. One thing that Bahrain does very well when they come into Oman is bat. And that is what they're going to be doing. Umar Imtiaz. He's going to be starting things for Bahrain, and there, a lot of expectations will be on his. The ex-captain, Sarfraz Ali, is going to be on the non-striker end, and the man, the legend, Bilal Khan, the left-arm pacer. He's a big name in franchise cricket right now. He did some really good bowling all round, and that's where he's very popular. We're all set for the chase. Bilal Khan with the new ball. Umair Imtiaz in readiness. Watchfully played. And I'll tell you what, when it comes to Bahrain's opening pair, Pranav, I've watched Sarfaraz Ali bat. It's all about my way or highway when he and he's batting in the middle. So he'll always give the bowling side an opportunity, that outside chance. Umair Imtiaz as well loves to play the big hits. So the situation is tailor-made, but can they capitalize? Something when you're talking about Bahrain is they are at a phase where Oman was probably 10, 12, 15 years ago. They're starting to get their infrastructure in. It was maj majorly cement, cement tracks a few years ago. And when you're consistently playing on cement tracks, what happens is you, you, get, you tend to get into that act of hitting through the line consistently. It could sometimes work in your favor, sometimes against you. But this is a quality bowling attack. Bilal Khan, Payaz Bhatt, Kalimullah is missing out. Mohammed Nadeem will come into play as well. That could be close. Was trying to get off the mark. Fine legs up in the circle. And this is a very interesting feel set. There's a deep square leg for the miss hit, for the pull shot that does not really work for the batter. There's a third as well, a slip in place. When you have 170 plus and you have a bowler who can get the ball to move both ways, you want to attack. And a regulation field set. Three on the off inside the circle, three on the on inside the circle as well. Make that four with shot fine. It's only a matter of time. And he'll get the gap. To open the account for Bahrain and himself, Umar, will get a single to deep mid-wicket. Some good cover by Oman. Fielding is something ha that has been top-notch from the Omani camp in the last few months, especially because of the way they worked on their fitness, their agility training. The physios have contributed in a big way. The head coach, Dilip Mendes, has a big role to play. A lot of it could be the guidance of His Excellency Pankaj Khimji that comes into play as well. Happy to nudge it to third. Naseem Koshi, the man who is generally seen with gloves in his hand, is going to be cleaning that up. Pratika Thavle, this is a this is a trend that is happening for the very first time. It is generally, even in the Oman Namibia series, it was Naseem Koshi who was keeping wickets. But today, Pratika Thavle being used as a specialist wicketkeeper. He's a brilliant player. 
especially with the bat as well. But today, he's used as a specialist wicket keeper. Oh, that could have been taken. It was dying on the bowler. In the follow through, Bilal Khan almost pouched it. And it looked like he had also got underneath that. Just that with the turn and the tumble, he lost it. That would have been wicket number one. That could have been a golden opportunity. Even just to get there, it might have fallen just short of him. But even to get there, it's incredible fitness training that Bilal Khan puts in. So hats off this left arm pacer from Oman who puts in his life and soul day after day for Oman. Bilal Khan. Skills. Skills and now fitness coming into action as well. And a very good start as well. Just the two runs off his first over. I met him this morning while walking up to the com box. It was his birthday yesterday and I, I, I wished him belated birthday wishes. And I told him, Bilal, you're turning younger by the days, by the years. And we shared a nice laugh. But what a fine athlete. What a fine performer. Time for some spin. Shaquille Ahmed, watch out for him. Another very wily customer with the ball. Left arm spin of Shaquille Ahmed. And I'll tell you what, Mikhail, he's not slower than anybody. If you're calling him as a spinner, he might take an offense because he fires the ball really quick. It. This is going to be a good contest. Sarfraz likes to play golf in the middle. He'll be looking to tee off. Hand-eye coordination kind of a batter. There he goes. And that has disappeared. This is a mighty hit. Six, the first one for Bahrain in their chase. And it comes from the bat of Sadfaraz Ali. He's a courageous player. Likes to take his chances. And this is what you're going to always get with Bahrain. They have loved their previous encounters here in Oman. They've loved to play their shots. And they'll continue doing that today against Oman in the ACC Men's T20 Premier Cup. And this is what makes them really special. A very lethal side. It was in the arc. And all that was required to be doing is put it away. And he's done that in style here. Incredible striking. Cannot take it away from him. Oh, yes. This time, though, he perishes. Plays across the line. Shaquille gets his man. Hit for a six in the previous delivery. Rattles the stump in the second. Oman get their first wicket. Bahrain in a spot of bother. He doesn't like it, Shaquille Ahmed. He doesn't like it. If you go after him, he goes after you. And on this occasion, it was you miss, I hit. It was a wonderful delivery. This is something that has been worked on very closely. Shaquille Ahmed, what a wicket. What a time to get the back of the impactful Sarfraz. And Pranav, that's what I was referring to when it comes to Sarfraz Ali. It's my way or highway. Now he's hit a six of the previous delivery. But once again, he clears his left foot and looks to play across the line to a bowler like Shakil Ahmad. Well, he walks back for seven and four. Bahrain lose their first wicket. It's eight for one. Imran Ali Bhatt, the left-hander, walks in. The best way I can put that incident is revenge is a dish which is best served cold. And every time that Shaquille Ahmed listens to that, he'll have a big wide smile on his face. Because he's got the better of Sarfraz just after being impacted with the, by that maximum. The ball was traveling. And on the second occasion... Sarfraz was not there in the com contest at all. Oh, that takes the edge. That's a regulation edge and he'll be off the mark with a streaky four down to third. That's wicket keeper bat Imran Ali. But, and he'll accept that as well and so will Bahrain. That's why they should have had a slip. Yes, yeah, especially when you've got a wicket, you might as well have a slip on this occasion. Not in the way that he would have wanted, but he would take it. On getting off with a boundary on the very first delivery, Imran Ali. Much better. What an over this has so far been. 
a dot, a six, a wicket, a four. Every delivery is an event here. I wish if we could have had the speedometer for Shaquille Ahmed, you'd realize how quickly he fires it in. Driven, driven well, finds the gap, and this is driven all along the ground. Kashyap Kumar Prajapati was at backward point, and he's only going to be a spectator getting the ball back. So end of over number two, and Bahrain have got off to a start 16, but they've lost Sarfraz in the process. So that's the batting guard so far. Umar Imtiaz, he's there in the middle. He's taken his time. Five balls, one run. And that man, Sarfraz, he is looking to explode. Seven of four deliveries. But he's departed. And Imran Ali Bhatt, who started with some lucky four runs of the very first delivery, beautifully driven through backward square. So runs on offer. Early runs on offer for Imran Ali. It can be, be a confidence booster, Mikhail, when you get the very first delivery, four runs. Not in the way you would have wanted, but four runs is runs. And then you drive one through the squarish region, all along the ground, between two fielders, and it races to the boundary. So eight runs coming in terms of boundaries. Yes. Just the start, any batter or team would want. Early in the innings, this chase is a long one here for Bahrain. And you ideally, ideally want a good partnership going as well, coming at runs coming at a brisk rate. But you have to also negotiate a certain Bilal Khan. Gully in place, short cover as well. Captain Zishan Maksud stations himself. Wide, wide down the leg side. He has a lot of, lot of range up his, up, up his armory, Bilal Khan. Loves to angle the ball into the left-hander. That is a ball that he's generated off lately. Yeah, he mixes his deliveries very well. One of the few pace bowlers Pranav have seen in recent years who can get that Yorker on the very first delivery as well. His block hole delivery is sometimes also a stock delivery in the match. Usually people do that with the old ball. Very few can do it with a new ball consistently. And then he doesn't have the jump. Slower delivery on to the pads. This could be very risky from Imran Ali. Closing the face of the bat to Bilal Khan. The experience of Bilal Khan could be very dangerous. Something that you get with Bilal Khan is attitude. He might have come from a very long, tiring session of the national camp into an academy. And if you request him, can you bowl a few overs? He will immediately pick up the ball, change, and bowl a few overs. That's the attitude that this man carries works very hard on his fitness, and he's a brilliant character. Indeed, a team man always trying to improve. I do follow him on social media. Every post is around the gym, inside the gym, working out. And that's always a good culture to have. Meanwhile, Umair Imtiaz was captain of Bahrain a couple of months ago in the World Cup qualifiers Asia region. Another, thi another thing that comes in with Bilal Khan is shot pulled away. There's a fielder there who might come into action. It is a brilliant catch from Rafiola. He took a blinder against Namibia a few days ago and he is continuing to do what he does best, pouching catches when it matters the most for Oman. Oh, the plan has worked. The miss hit. And the field end position has done the job. This is wonderful captaincy, good bowling, and great fielding as well. Oman sticking to their plans. Bahrain just about perishing in their bid to accelerate. Omer Imtiaz departs for two. Another wicket falls. It's 19 for one in the third over. Coming back to my point, Mikhail, Bilal Khan, for most players, 
pretty good from Bilal Khan, right around where he, you would want to land. And it's all about it's this game of discipline. For many many a players, you might you might use the word that the fitness has transformed over the years. For Bilal Khan, not really, because this man has worked ever so hard on his fitness since he's come into this land, this land of opportunity. And he's impressed one and all with his fitness skills, Bilal Khan. And such a planner. The previous two deliveries were slower deliveries, set the batsman up, and then the short, quick delivery into the body. There again, tentative push there by Imran Javed Anwar, the new batter in. He would know a thing or two about left arm pace. The left arm pace up for Bahrain. Imran Javed did bowl in the first innings. At the moment, he's feeling the wrath of Bilal Khan. Almost two overs. One wicket for five runs. Incredible bowler, Bilal Khan. Expect a block hole. Just not picking that short delivery. Shouldering arms there. Another very fine over. And let me tell you, Bilal Khan has been the pick of the bowlers for Oman in recent times. He's amongst wickets, 12 wickets for him in the six matches at an economy of 6.52 in the last 12 months for Oman. That's why he's their go-to man. I'm not too sure if he really picked the length and the height on that. Imran Javed Anwar and he'll have to once again go through the concussion test. Just going back to the situation, Bahrain 19 for 2, chasing 178. Quite certainly playing catch-up at this stage. This is what happens when you're facing the experience of Bilal Khan because he makes things difficult for you. Generally, when we're talking about weather, we often use the term that the actual temperature is 42 but feels like 45 and that's what happens when with Bilal Khan he might be bowling mid 130s but it feels like 140 the reason being that he doesn't have a big jump into his action so the ball very often skids through and it might come earlier than what you might have expected for years but another fine performer for Oman over the years is a nippy customer, gets the ball to move, can extract steep bounce as well. A lot of variation, a lot of depth here for Roman in the bowling department. He'll have a role to play as well. The man who's known for his pace is driven down the ground. Some good feeling will keep it down to one. Ahmed Fayaz but loves to angle it into the left-hander that's his natural swing does love the short ball as well and variation is something that you get on offer from Ahmed Fayaz but Nassim Khushi with that fielding at mid off very fine effort he's a senior statesman in the side but the commitment needs to be applauded Fayaz into his run-up does not look like the quickest of bowlers but that release point of his certainly generates a lot of pace and that's where he surprises quite a few batters Pranav. He comes out from the Pakistan under 19 ranks where he played one of those match of his life against India under 19 was the man of the match in the under 19 World Cup was, but was more of a swing bowler at that point of time I believe he got the wicket of KL Rahul if I'm not making mistakes An, few other big names as well and now when you see him in the red red kit here at the Oman Cricket Academy performing for Oman you would see him focusing on pace lethal lethality aggressive so it's transformation for Ahmed Fayaz but well-rounded pace attack Kalimullah just coming out of injury he's been rested They're struggling here. They're struggling here to pick the line and length of the Omani paces who are a little quick to their liking. Once again, a body blow. Not too sure if he was in position. 
displayed all over it. And that's where Bahrain batters need to be very clear about the lengths they're choosing to play. They need to pick the length very early and they need to keep rotating the strike. They're chasing a steep target of 178. They need 157 and 99. The asking rate will keep climbing. Once again, looking to pull. This could be dangerous. This could be dangerous. A direct hit was required. But it is Imran Ali who has shielded his thumbs at the non-striker's end. He might have taken a hit here. But what's important is he's going to be there in the middle, right on his elbow. Now the calling was terrible. Imran was not sure whether that run was on, but then Javed had committed. That throw just about ricocheting off his elbow, hurting him. Comedy of errors. Absolute confusion and pandemonium in the middle. And by the end of it, all is well that ends well. And you can wear a smile as well. You survive, I survive. Let's move on. A directed would have been curtains for him. It was a terrible call. Especially when things are not working in your favor. That's the last way you want to be throwing your wicket away. 22 for 2 at the moment, Bahrain. They're looking for a partnership, an explosive partnership at the moment. And a lot of it comes down to Imran Ali and Imran Javed. This time looks to go big but gets a leading edge. Fielder coming underneath should be taken. Straightforward catch there for Kashyap Kumar Prajapati. Wicket number three for Roman. And this time it's Fayaz Batu strikes. Anwar has to depart. Bahrain struggling at this stage. We did mention that he loves that shot ball. Fayaz Bhatt this time executing it to perfection. Did realize that Imran Javid was doing a catch up on pace while facing him and that's where the shot ball comes into action not giving Imran Javid any time whatsoever and all that Imran Javid could do is sky it straight up to backward point this is touch and go here but that's pretty good the third empire would be pretty happy with that and Fayaz Bhatt is going to be having the first blood for himself it was back of length to start off with and Imran Javid was looking to dispatch it to Jupiter probably and it goes into the waiting hands of Kashyap Kumar Prajapati and it's going to be all smiles in the Oman camp. Well, he was trying to play that to Jupiter you mentioned but he was just reminded that he was batting on earth. He was in no position whatsoever to play that pull shot and a straightforward catch to Prajapati. All the bowlers amongst wickets. Bahrain are throwing it away at this stage. Captain Heather Ali, but his team has a mountain to climb. Can he lead his troops and bring them out of this situation and take them to a position of strength? He's been the man to watch out for year after year. Heather Ali, the captain, accumulated a lot of runs on his last visit to Oman. Was scoring runs consistently. That is the time when Sarfraz was leading the side. And he was very happy to be praising Hyder Ali. On this occasion, it is Hyder Ali who is leading the side. And will have a big, big, big role to play even if they want to make a point in this game. And it's 4 overs done. 22 for 3. Struggling is Bahrain. If you're looking at that equation, it is not in favor of Bahrain at the moment, but it could change very quickly if Haider has a role to play. Three wickets in the process for Oman, and that's where they're dominating the situation. And to make use of the situation, they will utilize and bring in Rafiullah as their fourth pacer. Rather, third pacer. Rafiullah. He's not known for his bowling skills. He's, he's a decent bowler. 
his batting is what makes him very special you saw that impactful strike when it matters the most he can hit any ball out of out of the ground and now he's working on his bowling skills to make a perfect all-rounder situation the number 6 number 7 player for aman but uh, what i've liked about rafiul is that he's a very versatile player i feel he's one of the few players in oman ranks who has an x factor with him when it comes to his batting he can make any total look small and if he can live up to the potential of his bowling he'll certainly be one of the finest all-rounders in associate cricket and international cricket this one coming into the left-handed batter good shape on the delivery that's what rafiullah brings to the table what i've liked about zishan maksud is rotated his bowlers early on not allowed the batters to settle to any of them one man who would have a big smile on his face is could be reenu matthews he's the man who got rafiullah into a man providing him with an opportunity to start off with it's always an opportunity that a person is looking forward to and he is capitalized in, in no better way than anybody else could slow delivery cut cut well there is no protection there and four runs to the bat of imran ali he is looking good here at the oman cricket academy poor delivery short and wide giving the license to put that away and all the bat had to do was just about give him some space and play that towards backward point al bahrain need a move on from here they need a partnership they need quick runs and they cannot afford to lose another wicket it will be curtains to their plans and this chase if they want to make a match out of this they have to be targeting rafiullah it's going to be difficult to go after runs when you when bilal khan is bowling shakil is a maiza bowler as well soon you would see the left arm spin of zishan maksud the mystery spin of akib elias will come into play and once the spin comes into play that is where oman dominates the world cricket irrespective of which nation it is they are they are very very happy once their spin comes into play they have some quality spin to offer and that is the reason it's so important to go after rafiulla now what a wonderful ball rafiulla bending his back hard extracting a little bit of extra bounce from this dry wicket of oman well that's the effort ball you could see he put that extra bit of effort bent his back a bit too much there and extracted some bounce now every dot ball will mount as pressure point moves to deep point third comes into the circle four on the off inside the circle and three on side inside the circle with a deep square leg as well shot pulled there is protection in the deep there so he's sticking to the plan rafiullah keeping things tight here this despite leaking a boundary this has been a brilliant over so far just six runs of five deliveries something that has transformed this oman side into a brilliant cricketing team is the way they have worked hard on their fitness the support staff can take a bow for it their commitment their focus their planning has been spot on of the outside edge to the waiting third so heather ali is opened his account and he's opened his account with a lot of confidence here five overs done 29 for 3 bahrain with one over to go in the power play they would look to dominate here If you're talking about the bowling card, Belal Khan has picked up a wicket. Shakil Ahmed has got a wicket as well, and Ahmad Fayaz Butt has got a wicket to his name as well. Rafiullah, being the sole bowler not to get a wicket, but he's kept things tight. They wouldn't mind. Shakil was taken a liking because of his pace in the power play, and that's where he stopped. And Fayaz will come from the com commentary end. 
on box and, and into the gap immediately. Four runs. It was shot, it was wide, and it was played in front of covers. What a wonderful strike from the bat of Hyder Ali. And captain Zishan Maksud will not be happy as well with his delivery because he's placed himself in slip for the delivery that maybe just draws the batter forward from back of the length. And here Fayaz Bhatt has dished out something that is short and wide. Look at that. Zishan Maksud in the slip and all he does is Fayaz Bhatt is give room and give width to the batter. This could be so much predetermined because of the two points that are in place. That's a much better line. But the result is going to be similar off the outside edge of the bat of Hyder Ali and it's travelled very quickly to the third boundary. This is what happens when you have that extra pace, you're bending your back, you're bowling that extra few yards and you're being unlucky to be conceding a boundary. Well, that's T20 cricket. You, you bowl a bad ball, yes, you get hit. You bowl a good ball, it goes for four again. Uh, that was a much better delivery. Almost got the slip activated as well, but wide of first slip. And that meant... Heather Ali and Bahrain got another four. So what a start to this over for Bahrain. Back-to-back -back fours. Fayaz a little bit under pressure. He'll have to make a strong comeback. Remember, this is the final over in the power play. So Bahrain will look to accelerate and get as many. And with the field up in the circle, with the restriction still in place, Bahrain may just about chance their luck. And if you're looking at that required run rate, just inching close to 10 and that's where it's concerning times for Bahrain although similar kind of starts for Imran Ali and Heather Ali two consecutive boundaries or close by boundaries in the first six deliveries for them one beautiful shot one lucky to get a boundary similar kind of starts for the batters who share their second name Yes, what's good for Bahrain here is that a partnership is building. The fall of wickets has stopped. That's key, at least for starters in this chase. They need to preserve their wickets. However, that asking rate and that required rate is something they'll need to balance it out. Almost touching 10 at this stage. One of the batters will have to... One of the go-to balls of Fayaz but is the in-swinging Yorker. Sliding down the leg side on this occasion. He's been happy and content to be bowling back of length. And that's where he's stuck on to. Things not working in his favour at the moment. You don't want to concede too many extras as a bowler and as a fielding side. First game of the tournament for both these sides. You want to have all your boxes ticked, all minor issues ironed out. Just get the impression Oman are conceding way too many extras for comfort. Yes, they have a big target, big total, but they cannot be sitting in their comfort zone. And it's not just about win and lose. It, it so much comes down to net run rate in the league stage. Pulled, pulled with very little confidence from Imran Ali. He was not in control of the situation. Although, getting back to ball and in the process, he will get off strike. Oh yes, not in control, not in position. He have just taken his eyes off the ball as well. Surprised by that short delivery. It's already 11 runs have come off the first four deliveries. but he's looking for a wicket here he's always looking for a wicket he's got one to his name can he add on to the tally with a couple of balls to go in the power play that's quick quick into the wickets and that single will allow Heather Ali to get off strike Heather Ali has been the backbone of Bahrain in the last few years he's a brilliant batsman and he can capitalize, he can score quickly once he settles in. And he's got a, got a start here. On the other hand, it is Imran Ali, who started off pretty decently. The left-hand, right-hand combination is also an advantage that doesn't allow the opposition to dominate with similar kind of spin, maybe a leg spinner, maybe a left-arm spinner. 
and that's where it could be Archibaldias who could come into play very next. There again. Oh, this could be close. A throw at the non-striker's end. But all is well. It ends well for them. And will that be an overthrow? Yes, it is. And this could just go down towards the long gone region for a four. And this means that five runs have come off the bat. And what a dramatic end to the power play as well. Hospitality. Hospitality is what we talk about when we talk about Oman. Returning the favor back to Bahrain. It was... Naseem Kushi at mid on was not in position. Bahrain did leak six runs in terms of overthrows in the first innings. And on this occasion, it is Oman who is repaying the favor back. This time it's five signals. Signals, power play number two. So over number seven to 20. So a little bit of relief for the bowlers with five fielders allowed outside the circle. And with that, it's going to be the man who needs to be given a Nepalese nationality, Andrew Leonard. Andrew, what do you make of the match? Well, yeah, very good afternoon, Pranav. And funny thing about Bahrain, the way in which they'll approach chase, chases, they'll never really be out of the contest. They'll just keep going. Yes, three wickets in the power play, not ideal. But certainly still the potential for them to get into this contest. Maybe not so across on ground too. Or UAE are in all sorts of trouble. Rafiola, that caused trouble in many ways. It all started with an inside edge missing the off stump by millimeters probably. And that run was never on. So two opportunities missed in a single delivery from Oman here. They're panicking at the moment. Bahrain, they're not getting the runs in the way they would have liked. They need boundaries here. The required run rate is inching very close to 10. And that's concerning signs for Bahrain. Angling it away from the right-hander. And Heather is happy to guide it to third to get a get off strike. You think about the momentum and the importance of it in T20 cricket. Oman took all the momentum from that first innings. They were outstanding at the death. That flourish 47 off the last three has given them the upper hand. You sense if Bahrain had ended well, this could have been a very, very different contest. There is still a chance. You've got Haider Ali out there, Imran Ali alongside him, the keeper batter. He started brightly, 350s to his name in his career. Driven, driven in the air. There's no protection there. So four runs from the bat of Imran Ali. They're looking to dominate the second phase of the second innings here at the Oman Cricket Academy, and they're looking to dominate the bowler who could, whom they, they can target, Rafiola. Yeah, not the right length, it's just too full. As a consequence, it sits up there to be, to be put away, and it's put away really comfortably. Imran Ali wasn't in the squad that was in uh, Kuala Lumpur, uh, playing that pentangular series where Bahrain were unbeaten throughout, beating Malaysia, Kuwait, Vanuatu, and Tanzania. It was stapled on to the back end of that the Cricket World Cup Challenge League playoff. So they've been in good form on a nice winning streak in this format. Angling it away from the left-hander on this occasion. He does have a few variations up his sleeve, but a few love. What you get with Imran Ali is he has a brilliant hand-eye coordination and that's where he becomes a very good left-handed batter. He's one of the only players in this squad that wasn't in, in Malaysia, so returning into action, trying to make the most of his opportunity. He started brightly, 26 off 17. It's a good platform. Just want to keep an eye on that required run rate. You don't want it to get north of 10, certainly not before the final five overs. Happy to be rotating strike at the moment. They've got the start. In the process, they've lost three wickets. That's something that they would be concerned about. And that's where it's become so important for Heather Ali and Imran Ali to build a partnership, stitch a partnership, probably take them closer to the 13th over, 14th over. 
and that anything is possible. Oman got probably 70 odd in the last seven. It was really those last three, wasn't it, that, that were so damaging. I thought they controlled the game nicely, but just got their, their tactics wrong. Underused the two left-arm bowlers. And the medium pacers were plundered at the death. Slower delivery inside edge. And they will rotate the strike while Pratik clears it up. So runs flowing and flowing well for... Bahrain at the moment. 7 was done. 54 for the loss of three wickets. Bahrain. Moment of the Just get a look at the, the best of the power play. Uh, three wickets falling in it, some aggression at first. A few moments of fortune too, wasn't there? A couple of outside edges that ran down to the boundary. And then some nice strokes through the offside. And a flourish, a pick up to the leg that didn't quite come out of the screws. That was the third wicket to fall. And now all set for the eighth over with Mohammed Nadim coming in for his first. The experience of Mohamed Nadeem, he is, he's one of those experienced campaigners for Oman. Bats in difficult times, bowls in difficult times. And he is such an integral part of this Omani side. He's come into bowl the eighth over. And he's come, come from the bo come box end. This is the end where you get a little bit of extra bounce when you're playing here in Oman. He's so much experience, isn't he, Mohamed Nadeem? Really is... Incredible, his endurance and his stamina, well past 40 now. He continues to offer plenty with bat and ball. Wasn't needed with the bat today, was shuffled down the order. What can you do with the ball? Guided to third. They're happy to rotate strike at the moment. They do realize the importance of stretching a partnership here. Coming back to Mohamed Nadeem, what you get with Mohamed Nadeem is that he bowls those difficult times. He bats in difficult times. And so often his contributions, those 30 of 17 deliveries, they go unnoticed because of those big knocks from the top order batters. But then those, those are the kind of knocks which make a big difference. Pulled, pulled well. And this is brilliant from Hyder Ali. He's looking to dominate here at the Oman Cricket Academy and he's looking to capitalize here against the experience of Mohamed Nadeem. Yeah, nice swivel pull. Picked up the length really quickly, didn't he? Don't think Nadeem quite has the pace to be bowling that length anymore. It's not short enough to be a short ball. It's not the full enough to be a good length. So he can easily affect a cross-batted stroke like he has there. Hyder Ali, really good shot. And the man... Two men, in fact, out in the deep square, they're working on the leg side. He's quite square, might just need to come a little straighter with Nadeem's pace. That struck, and that struck very well once again. Over covers going all the way. Heather Ali is looking impactful. He's looking dangerous. He's looking lethal here, Andrew. He could well be the difference between win and loss here. Well, game on. That's what Bahrain's captain is saying. Shot of the day from either innings. Probably from either ground. That's as good as you'll see. Inside out, over extra. Nadim was forced to go fuller. And Ali read it perfectly. Look at the precision with which he's opened the blade. Still held his shape. And he gets maximum reward. Outstanding batting. Batting the highest quality. Very much game on. That required run rate of nine. Won't be too much of a concern. This wicket, I think, is a very good batting wicket. I think there's plenty of runs in it. Do you think it's time for spin now? That's probably fallen just short of Prati Prajapati there. It was struck and it was struck really hard. He's raved, saved three runs at the minimum. Yeah, really good stop, but that easily could have been a third consecutive boundary. And in fact, uh, I think the skipper feels as though he's missed out. It was short, it was wide, just needed to get it another yard to the right. 
A little backward point. He does well. Gets the reverse hands to get both on it. Pressure immediately on Mohammed Nadim. 13 runs from his first five deliveries. Can he get out of this over? And surely we will see a change in pace. Surely the spinners have to come into the contest in the next over. Mohammed Nadim. In the block hole. Driven. Sweeper will cut it off. So with that single... It is Bahrain who is looking to dominate this match. The very first match of the ACC Men's T20 Premier Cup. 68 for 3 in 8 overs. So just when you thought Bahrain was out of equation, they're fighting their way back into this match. This partnership between Imran Ali is pr stitching pretty well, and they have, that's the reason you would be able to see those Manhattans catching up. Pretty good. Last couple of overs from bah Bahrain. They've scored runs. They've ro scored runs risk-free, and that's where they are pretty relaxed. The big question is going to be, what of Sohel Ahmed? We saw him go down in the first innings. He's yet to bat. Looked like quite a nasty injury. Usually bats at number three. He's the leading average in Bahrain international cricket by a distance. He's averaging over 50 in the T20I game. So Maxud will come in for his first ball. Just the question will be whether or not he's going to be able to bat. It looked like quite a nasty injury. He didn't know whether it was a hamstring or maybe a lower back cramp of some kind. And that's why they've had to shuffle their order around. I'm sure he might have to go out there on one leg if the situation requires in due course. But he's a big blow for Bahrain. But the two alleys right now are doing it comfortably. And that equation is well within their compass. 110 more needed. But this is the phase. This is the phase that you want to watch out that's pretty well struck just behind square. There was a change in field, but that change of field is not going to be stopping Bahrain from accumulating two more to their tally. Heather Ali is looking devastatingly good. And along with him, it is the man on strike, Imran Ali, who is making things happen for Bahrain at the moment. Flighted. And once again, the sweeper will come into action. Rafiullah is the man there. So they're going pretty well here, Andrew. 70-odd, around the eight, midway mark. Nine, way, nine deliveries away from the midway mark. And they have the firepower. The only thing is the spinners of Oman. Zishan, Maksud, Akib Ilyas will come into play. Shaquille, we have already had a sight of. They're not easy to get away. He's happy to fly the delivery here. Zishan, Maksud has noticed a little bit of turn in the first innings as well. Once again, dug out in the deep for a single. Yeah, the big question here I is whether or not the four overs of Aki Bilyas will influence the game to a point where it can swing it heavily towards the home side's way. Right now they're in a contest. Even if the next seven balls are okay, 95 or, or so off the remaining 10, very achievable. Very achievable with seven wickets in hand. And Bahrain will like their chances of doing that. Skipper not happy. He wanted the single. Was sent back so he won't get the strike. 11 left. It's 73 for three.
you ask for kebelias here he is and fielding is something that is the difference between both these sides oman is a much fitter much lethal side when it comes to fielding especially when we are talking about the last 12 months i think this would have been out mohammed adamer is a backward point it was a fairly casually run single maybe it was really a byproduct of the previous over the last ball where they turned down the single here is aki bilias in such a red hot wicket taking form after remember at the halfway stage in the first innings it was 76 for one that oh man were so okay they had two more wickets in hand but the scoring patterns are very very similar they're going to need aki bilias to be at his best with his leg breaks and his off breaks it's not just the runs but the wickets in hand the most important part is the impact the impacting capacity that oman has towards the lower middle order in terms of zishan maksud in terms of rafiulla there are other batters as well to follow mohammed nadeem strikes a long ball the question is whether bahrain has that kind of assistance or support yes we know hyder ali is, is world class is one of those backbones one of those pillars of bahrain cricket consistently scores runs he can be cheeky as well but apart from hyder ali who else can it be imran ali is playing a good role at the moment i think it's another ali the former captain who you could have a big say in this contest yeah career strike rate up towards 150 it's a big big ball just the one bend stand to long on uh, and you just wonder you just suspect if bahrain could make it 9 and a half 10 and over off the last 7 or 8 okay you're probably not going to take aki bilias for 40 from his four you won't but there's runs to be had off others particularly when the pace is on the ball you think of of rafiola he can be picked up ahmed butt as well so find seven maybe eight and over off ilias and zishan maksud it's game on one thing that's going to be really difficult is going to be the fielding which was not top top notch just a ball ago although 10 overs done half way mark of the second innings 78 for 3 the game is on it's time for drinks
if you are not great at maths, th these are the kind of equations that require 100 of 60 deliveries, 10 runs per over. It's a no-brainer. It's a brilliant match in the making. Oman versus Bahrain, the very first game of the Men's T20 Premier Cup 2024 here at the Oman Cricket Academy between these wonderful picturesque Al-Hajar Mountains. And it's the top all-rounder in the world, Zishan Maksud, who's going to be continuing. Pulled. Pulled for a maximum. Zishan Maksud has been struck, and he's been struck by Imran Ali, and he is not going to be liking it. Yeah, I very think, very much think we've got a game in our hands here. Just dragged down and gets a good piece of it. Slightly shorter that side today. And the left-hander, with the ball spinning into him, does enough. Cap has come off, the helmet's come off now. Uh, that drinks break. Bahrain are very much in this contest. If they keep that required run rate under 10, I think they could pull off a big upset here. It's the experience of that man, Zishan Maksud. He's one of those standout performers. He loves the big stage. Difficult situations as when he wants to walk in. The left arm spin up. It was Akeb Ilyas who was not happy previously when Shaquille Emmett did not go for that catch at long on. And that catch was of Haider Ali. How much could that cost? Was there an attempt possible? Quicker, quicker on this occasion, and they'll be happy to rotate strike to Zishan Maksud. So the game becomes suddenly very easy when you get a boundary of the first two deliveries. Yeah, it's about how you follow that up then. I think the two batters, the two alleys, have had a chat with each other during the break because there was a bit of miscommunication. We did have that one run out opportunity as well. Firing it in. This is what you get with Pratika Tavli. He's very quick behind the stumps. All those sliding down the leg side, Zishan Maksud. Bahrain will get one run in terms of extra. This has been a brilliant wicket to bat on. Runs on offer. He's looking to pick up a wicket here. Zishan Maksud does realize that wickets are the need, need of the hour and that's the only way Oman can make a come back into this all-important first match. Shot, arm ball, pulled straight to long on. And it's been a fairly expensive over so far. There's still plenty of options for, for Zishan Maksud to work with. He, he may well whip himself out of the attack here. Just wonder, does he go for an over of Bilal Khan? Does he try to find a way to, to break this partnership, break it now? It has to be. It has to be Shakil Ahmed. This brilliant running by Bahrain. A quick call from Heather Ali and Imran was happy to respond. 11 was done, 89 for 3 Bahrain and they're looking to make a fight back here. Well, that's a state of play. Right now Bahrain are in control of this chase. Okay, 89 off 54 may hang in the balance, but the two sides at this stage of the contest, Bahrain, were well ahead. The last five overs, they picked up 48 runs. They've done it comfortably. It was 81 for one in the first, 88 for three in the chase. Bahrain came on here on the opening morning. This group, Group B, well, it's an absolute group of death. Cambodia have it all to do. There's no doubt the lowest ranked side in the tournament. This is something that is very rare from the Omani side. They've been a standout fielding. This is another occasion when Ake Bilyas is going to be giving a big stare to Shaquille Ahmed. Well, this is a poor piece of judgment. Look at his positioning. He's six, seven yards off the rope on the shorter side. As a consequence, if he's right on the rope, that goes at a chest height to him. Easiest catch you would have seen. Instead, at six. This is wonderful cricket. Wonderful cricket from the bat of Haider Ali. He loves to be here in Oman. He scores runs consistently here in Oman. And he's making a merry here. Well, an insult to injury here. And this, well, alongside the inside out six. Off the quick bowler. Again, shot of the day. Look at that. Soaring into the sky here in Al-Emirat. 
Sensational. Bang, bang, 6-6. Six, six. Bahrain in full control now. Flatter. It's forced. Ah, kept to go flatter. And this is some very, very good running. Pretty ordinary cricket from Oman at the moment. It all started with Shaquille Ahmed not attempting the catch of Haider Ali in the previous over of Akib Ilyas that, uh, that forced him to be five yards inside. And on this occasion, he pops it just over his head because he was five yards inside. And now things are flowing in favor of Bahrain. He's in a hurry here, Haider Ali, 43 of 22 deliveries. And his partner is accompanying him well, 43 of 31 deliveries for him, Imran Ali. Struck, struck well. And this one's found the gap as well. A tumbling, Mohamed Nadeem will keep it down to two. I have to say, excellent batting. Not just the two maximums, but follows it up with a, a pair of twos. Now the challenge for Haider Ali is his stamina, his endurance. How fatigued is he? He's asking for liquids. We just had a drinks break 11 balls ago. That's how hot and humid it is out there. Has to find a way to not give it away. His partnership now worth 83. Bahrain in full control. So a team which is which relies on its spinners. It is Haider Ali, who, which has counter-attacked those spinners. Started with Zishan Maksud and now Akeb Ilyas. 12 was done, 106 for 3 Bahrain. Well, 17 runs from the over. And you felt that Akeb Ilyas was the one that you might not be able to target, you might not be able to go after. He was so economical against Namibia in particular, going for 9, 24, 13, 23, and 21. And right now... And right now, the captain and vice-captain have had to come together And they're having a big discussion. And instead of being furious with the break and the liquids coming on for Bahrain, they're needing this time to somehow assess how do they get back in the game. Because right now the game is only going one direction. And it's heading the direction of an upset. We could have two massive upsets this morning. Kuwait are all over UAE on ground two. And right now, for me, Bahrain are in full control here. Well, if you wondered how competitive, how tight this ACC Premier Cup was going to be. You're getting great indication on the first morning. Oh man, are being given a real fight. Can they find the character? Can they use all that experience to pull themselves out of trouble? We're also seeing a batsman getting treatment now. I think it's Imran Ali, is it? Who's got a nice pack on the neck. In fact, it's the the skipper, Haider Ali, he's got a nice pack on the neck. He's got an elbow from the physio in his hamstring. Well, it's all happening. Might not see Sohel Ahmed, but players being put through the mixer as early on day one. What, what do you reckon it is out there? 36, 37 degrees, humidity to boot? It's pretty hot. And more than hot, it is humid. That's the main issue. There's not a lot of breeze that is blowing across the ground, and that's making things difficult here in Oman and it's a crucial crucial time for Oman as they've been put in, put into a test very early into this tournament by Bahrain I believe they got more than par it is Haider who is still receiving some treatment from the physio well they've had all the momentum for the last 45 minutes or so really since that third wicket fell just wonder whether or not this slight break and play might give Oman an opportunity to pick up a wicket the last five overs 53 for none they've done it easily it's been an exceptional partnership for the fourth wicket they put on 84 in 49 deliveries and as a consequence there has to be a change it isn't the change I would have gone for I think I would have turned to Bilal Khan when you're in trouble Zishan Maksud, you turn to your gun bowler. He's bowled two overs, one for five. You need a wicket now. 
don't think he can hold his overs back to the death. Instead, he's going to turn to the left arm spinner, Shaquille Ahmed. He'll try to dart in a couple of wickets. Hyder Ali looks like he's okay to continue. He's had a lot of treatment. We've had a five or six minute break there. He apologizes to the umpire. This game is in Bahrain's hands. It could still go either way, though. He's a standout bowler, Shaquille Ahmed. Every time that he's playing for any team, he, he's looked upon to make breakthroughs. And he bowls a very tight line. At the moment, he's been looked upon by the entire Oman team and its fan base to pick up a wicket here because that's the only way I believe Oman can make a comeback into this game because Bahrain are cruising. Yeah, the running between the wickets after a few wobbles early in the partnership has got so much better. It really has. There's been better communication. They've picked up the ones and twos. Oman are a side. You can run ragged in the field. They don't have the youngest legs out there. And Jackie Lamott will be looking to make amends for that drop catch. Should have held it off Hyder Ali. That struck. And that struck a big, big, big way. The pace of Shaquille would have assisted Imran Ali. And what a way to get to 49. Yeah, brilliant batting from both of these two batters. The reason why captain says, I'll get a single, and then you have a crack against the left arm spinner. It's just too easy. Into the hitting arc, it's the shorter side of the ground. Not by much, but you get a good piece of that, you're always going to get six. These two both thinking about 50 and both thinking about a big win. A massive upset on the opening morning here. Oh man, in all sorts of trouble. We did mention that they like to play their shots and they're known for their batting skills and that's exactly what Bahrain are doing here at Oman. Happy to rotate strike. This will be 50 for Imran Ali. What a wonderful knock has he played. He's held on to one, one innings and one side and not just that, he's played his shots when things mattered the most. And what a wonderful partnership this has been for Bahrain. Well, back into the team, having missed the tour out in Malaysia. And it's a fourth T20 I-50. What a recall for him, the keeper batter. Strike rate over 150. Six boundaries, including two maximums. Very well played. That's wicked. That is what we, he's known for. It is Shaquille Ahmed bringing in the woo. This is an incredible moment. It is just Imran Ali who was going after Shaquille Ahmed and he struck back by picking up the wicket of the open, opposing captain. It is Heather Ali who is going to be departing in the process. Well, he can't believe it. He might have been looking to just cut one away to get 50. Nothing wrong with that front foot. That's absolutely fine. One more look at it here. It's just his classic angle. It always forces back in towards you. Look at the celebration. They were desperately in need of a wicket, and Shaquille's the one who's provided it. He's seen the better of Bahrain's captain, who's gone for 47. It's 114 for four. So it'll be Amir bin Nasser who will be replacing the captain. And this is going to be an important, very crucial phase of the match. Shaquille Ahmed, the left arm spinner, has picked up a wicket here. He's a partnership breaker. And immediately you will be able to see a little bit of spring in the feet of these Omani lads who are looking to win the first game and start off this big tournament. It was dotted in. No chance whatsoever for Heather Ali. And he is pumped up. And why wouldn't he be? So Amr will get off strike and he'll open his account with a single to long on. 13 overs done, 115 for four Bahrain.
What a shot. Beautifully played. No let up with the new man coming to the crease. In comes, I believe it's Amr bin Nazir. We're going to get that check though because there has been a little bit of uh, contention with some of the, the playing shirts. I do think it's Amr bin Nazir. Crick Info have, have now got it right. They didn't have it right at first. Beautiful inside out. Stroke over extra cover. As I welcome Mikhail Vaswami. Mikhail, very much game on here. And if anything, advantage to the visiting side. The hosts are in real trouble. Oh, yes. Oman have been caught by surprise by the Ali Storm some time back. Heather Ali and Imran Ali have run right with the bat. And all of a sudden, they've just about woken up from slumber. That wicket of Heather Ali came in very handy. This is going to be close and given. Not a big turn of the ball with his off breaks. His leg breaks go a long way. It's skidded on. One brings two. The first alley falls. Now goes the second. It was a bit of a nothing shot. The question for the umpire will have been, did it get him in line? If it did, surely it was going to go on and crash into middle or maybe off stump. And oh man, back in the game. Oh yes, back to back wickets for them. Both the Ali's back in the dugout. Akib Ilyas strikes Imran Ali, but what an innings he played. 50 of 34. Had a strike rate of 147 when the chips were down, when the backs were to the wall. And just when Bahrain looked good to chase the target down, they have lost half their side. He walks back. We'll take a look at the dismissal once again. Coming around the wicket wide of the crease. Ali felt that may have gone down leg, but not for the empire. Akib Ilyas cannot get a foot wrong this morning. 50 with the bat amongst wickets this morning as well. It's 120 for 5. Viripathan to the crease, who immediately gets off the mark with a little outside edge. Who's going to go all the way to the rope? Oh dear, not a good piece of fielding from Shaquille Ahmed. Probably should have been a couple, but he's almost ended up just running out of gas, hasn't he? Runs and wickets continue to come. Oh yes, but spare a thought for Shaquille. He bowled the last over, got a wicket as well, and now he had to do the hard yards in the field as well. A regulation edge at short third, he had to give chase, but the ball won the race was wondering, was thinking, should I put in the dive? Should I put in the slide? Satya off the mark in edgy fashion. Bahrain continue to find the boundaries despite the loss of wickets. They need 54 of 38. Very gettable. They still have five wickets in hand. The depth of their batting will certainly be tested in this chase. Chance and gone. Well, he holds on and he gives him a hug for a good measure. What a catch from Aki Vilyas. He's changed the game in just three deliveries. Verappen gets four. He goes two. Oh, man, are pulling this out of the fire. Three quick wickets. That's a soft dismissal. Bahrain lose another batter. Wicket number six, and it's that man, Aki Vilyas. Two wickets for him in this over. He may have conceded boundaries, but that group of theirs will celebrate this time using the crease a slow delivery through the air and satya playing a little too early simple straightforward catch and by the end of it a little bit of a friendly hug and a gesture as well and i'll tell you what 124 for six There's one but into the crease at number eight. Bahrain have got themselves in a muddle. They were looking so good, weren't they? 114 for three, thanks to that marvellous fourth wicket partnership that was worth 92 runs between Imran Ali and the skipper, Haider Ali Butt. But now Aki Bilyas 
Well, he's changed the game, and out comes the googly. Wasn't picked by the new man. Through to the keeper. Nine runs, but critically two wickets from the over. 14 bold, 124 for six. One more look at that catch, Mikel. It's standing. Oh, yes, and by the end of it, there was a little bit of amusement value as well. Oman celebrating, Bahrain not so. 124 for six, and all of a sudden, Bahrain have perished in this chase. They were looking so good, so strong. They were ahead in this contest. Take a look at that worm. You can see how it has suddenly dipped. That blue worm was climbing well despite those early three wickets that they lost. That partnership between Imran Ali and Haider Ali gave them that much-needed climb and surge upwards. But once the two batters perished, you can see that worm just about on the decline moving south. Very much still a chance, though. The big equation, I don't know if we can get a camera on the, the Bahrain dugout, potentially, just see if we can... Just to see if Sohail Ahmed is going to bat. We're not sure whether they're going to bat or not. He's had a, a very bad, looks like either a hamstring injury, maybe a lower back cramp. He's their star player, averages over 50 in this format. Mikhail. I don't see any sign of him having the pads on. This is tickled nicely around the corner. Should be a couple. They're still on somewhat risky footing here. Oh, man, they don't have a huge number of runs to work with. Just 51 needed to win. One of the things I, I've seen with Bahrain, you've covered a lot of their cricket as well, Mikhail, they bat all the way down. Numbers 9 and 10, certainly capable of clearing the ropes too. Still no signs of Soel Ahmed with the pads on. We see there, might be Ali Dawood in next. He could come at number 9. But surely, even if he's battling, he's got to get out there, swing on one leg if he can. That's a good point. Because they're in with a realistic chance of getting to that target of 178 50 of 31 they need one big partnership a one batter who can bat through not a single so this has been a good over by Shaquille Ahmed yeah good comeback from Shaquille Ahmed good comeback from Aki Bilyas and, and the big factor it could well be the deciding factor, Mikhail. Two overs of that man, Bill Alcan, left. So if you need, let's say, 48 off five, less than 10 and over. This one nearly hits the off stump, misses everything. How can you find a way to score off Bill Alcan? 15 bolt, five remain, 129 for six. Are they going to be the two defining overs of this contest? The two remaining overs of big Bill Alcan, the birthday boy from yesterday. Oh yes, and that's why a lot depends on how Bahrain approaches the next two overs, the 16th and the 17th. They'll have to capitalize and get going, take their chances as well over there. You can't leave too much for later. That's because you have the likes of Bilal Khan, who can be very, very meager and miserly in their spells in the death. Especially with his block hole deliveries. Oman have come back well. They have just sat back in the middle overs. And that break where Heather Ali was just about nursing his injury gave a good opportunity for Oman as well to come together and just about reassess and regroup. That's going to miss leg. Definitely going to miss leg. Angling down. Good decision. And one of our two umpires there today. Great to see S. Ravi here with us as well. But that is Rambukwela. Tossed up and smashed away. Gets a good piece of it. And he's not going to get four because of a really good diving effort just out of your view and our view indeed. It's about the only part of the ground we can't see. Kasha Prajapati, body on the line, two runs saved. Brilliant commitment in the middle. That was firmly struck. It was travelling. Work to do for the field at long off. And look at that for an effort. Full stretch drive. Saves two runs. Back live. Yeah, I still just feel this is going to the final over. It feels that way. What's going on across the road from us, Mikhail, is the big question. 
two potential upsets in the offing. But UAE battling back. This one smashed down towards Prajapati. We'll keep it to just a single. It's a fourth wicket partnership over there. Alassane Sharafu is 81 off 43. Changing the game in a heartbeat over there. Asif Khan giving him company there for UAE in this chase. It's a good partnership brewing. Meanwhile, out here. Looks to go big. Has he got the distance on it? Yes, comfortably towards the cow corner region. Much needed home run. This will ease the nerves in the dugout as well. That equation gets easier now for Bahrain. This is exactly what I'm saying, Mikhail. Everyone in this Bahrain lineup, they play so much T20 cricket, is capable of clearing the ropes. That's a very good strike. It's a modern way. Man out there, take him on, hit it over his head. And again, good use. I know it's against the spin, but it's the shorter side. 40 off 25. You know, this hangs tantalizingly in the balance, doesn't it? Be a single to close it. Aki Bilias's spell. I didn't think they'd get 40 off as four. They have. It's come at the cost of two wickets. It's 139 for six. Here's the bowling options, Mikhail. Where do you turn now if you're Zishan Maksud? Obviously, Bilal Khan will bowl two of the last four. Who bowls the other two? It's a big decision to make between Rafiullah. I would look at Fayaz, but I would look for Fayaz, but because he has those variations which are not easy to pick. So Bilal Khan and Fayaz, but will be my go-to men in these final four overs. Both of them have two two overs, which will complete the quota of 20. Now this is going to be the deciding factor. Bilal and Fayaz, they've done it time and again for Roman in recent years. They have been the go-to men and Tishan Maksud is most comfortable and confident giving them the ball in such situations. Can this batting pair for Bahrain, Ahmed Bin and Rizwan Butt bring a few more big hits, this game will completely turn on its head. Well, if, if Fayaz but it is that bowl 17 and 19, it will be Bilal Khan to bowl 18 and 20. If you're a Bahrain here, you've got to take risk in these two overs. Target Fayaz but He's a good bowler, yes. But there'll be pace on the ball. He does bowl those cutters. Likes a leg cutter. Has one out of the back of the hand as well. These are the overs to take risk. 17 and 19. If you can break down that 39 you require, you need 25 off these two from Fayaz but I think you're not going to get much more than 14 from the two of Bill Alcan. Another fielder goes down. It shows the humidity, the heat. And again, I, I think this is just simple humidity and heat. Shaquille Ahmed it is that's gone down now. Another one down with cramp. These are oppressive conditions, Mikhail. Not easy at all to play in. And you could just get the impression that he's just about feeling a little dizzy in the middle. And that's why he may have to walk back as well. Yeah, he's walking back. He'll need some medical attention there. Bahrain required 39 of 24. You can look at the team physio as well, asking him if he's just about feeling a little dizzy. And this means that Ayan Khan comes in as replacement. Uh, he's electric in the middle. He's a good fielder to have at this stage. Well, I think he's probably the best fielder that Oman have in the 14-man squad. So it's, it's a big boost getting him on. And I think there was a word from the umpire just to check the authenticity of his injury. It did look genuine in fairness. Down he goes. Here we go. 39 off the final four overs. And that's not going to help. Starts with a wide outside the off stump. You just sense this is going to the final over, if not the final delivery, Mikhail. And I'll tell you what, Bahrain has to be applauded for this chase because they were in a spot of bother, losing three very early wickets. The manner in which they have come back and approached this target is commendable. But it's all about finishing well. Pressure will be on Oman, home side, put up a good total, now playing catch-up. I just wonder, is Fire's butt fully fit out there? That, that's a very much an amble to the crease. 
I think it's, it's difficult for us to tell, isn't it? We're in a, a beautiful air-conditioned commentary box here. I think out there, the humidity in particular, it's just zapping the energy of all these players. Absolutely, Andrew. But what I've noticed about Fayaz, his run-up may not be pacey, but at the point of delivery, Andrew, that effort that he puts is, yeah, the shoulder that he brings in just adds up and cranks that pace up as well. Well, that's wide outside the off stump and it's been carved away. He certainly doesn't look like he's attacking the crease with real energy. This is the big over that Bahrain need to target. Would have been a wide if he didn't go for it. Instead, he gets four. Very much this game is still in Bahrain's hands. Oh, yes, this equation is getting easier. Not great bowling. Wide delivery. There's no protection there behind backward of point. And that raced away for a four. And this is where the strategy needs to change. I'll not be surprised if he brings up a change of pace now. The slow deliveries. We did see in the first innings as well. Each time the ball, pace was taken off the ball. Stroke making got that bit difficult. Does go to that cutter, edged away, edge for four. Maxud went over to his quick. Just doesn't look in wholehearted effort here. This game is very much Bahrain's for the taking. Good late order cameos from numbers seven and eight. Game on again. Fortune favors the brave, but another ordinary delivery. Third up in the circle. Once it got that thick edge, it was flying for a four. Things going Bahrain's way. Oman are struggling at the moment, and all of a sudden this game has changed color complexion. Bahrain are ahead. And we talk about upsets, this certainly be, will be one of them. Well, and the game has changed across on the second oval as well. Asif Khan has a career best of 59 not out, including four sixes. UAE need just 19. They're going to get off to a winning start over there, it looks like. Can Bahrain provide the upset on the opening morning? Much better. But good running, really good running. You'll get the single, and that's all you need after back-to-back -back boundaries. Bilal Khan, how much is he going to have to work with? 11 runs in four deliveries of this over. And I'll tell you what, Bahrain have got to 150 as well. It's been a little bit of a crawl and a wobble, but they've just about shown great character and resolve in this chase. Not thrown it away and have put up a fight. It's still not over, 28 of 20. A wicket or two here for Oman. And I'll tell you what, again, this game will be split wide open. Just not sure what the plan is here from Fayez, but there's two men behind square on the offside. They're very, very fine. One's almost a fly slip, the other sort of a short third. I think he might be looking to hit the wide block hole. Now fine leg comes back, mid-off comes up into the circle. Goes to the slower ball bouncer. That was the change up. That was why the field changed. Better from Fayez, but... Oh yes, they'll have to apply a lot of their mind into the deliveries now. Fayaz is guilty of just bowling a few very ordinary deliveries. He began with a wide. You can't allow the license to the lower order. And that's what Fayaz has done in this over. You just wonder here, two, four, or six, I think is a good result. You probably want Amer on strike, the more experienced batter. Now long off goes back. It's going to be the man out at deep cover up into the circle. So everyone is in the circle on the offside with the exception of long off. Could give himself room outside the leg stump here. Instead, he doesn't read the slower ball bouncer. And somehow Butt gets out of the over with the leg by. The 150 has come up. It's 151 for six. 28 required. Excuse me, 27 required off the last three. Mikhail, which way is this game going? Very tough to say at this stage. The current run rate almost nine, the required rate nine as well. So it's even Stevens. 151 for six. 28 needed in 18. This over is going to be pivotal to Oman's chances. It's Bilal Khan.
Well, these are the situations that Bilal Khan loves. Absolutely adores the big stage. He's got 27 to work with. He'll bowl 12 of the last 18. Starts into the block hole. Get through for a single. Even if you get 12 off Bilal Khan's 12, that would leave... 15 off the other six. That could be doable. Is that the way they're looking at this? Well, Andrew Noya sounding like a coach of the Bahrain side, getting into the permutations and combination. But that's how one needs to approach in such situations. It's, it's all about targeting bowlers and playing to the merit as well. If they get 12, they'll need another 14. Nails the block hole. Oh, but he gets it through. The short third fielder think it's Ahmed, but doesn't cut it off. That's a critical boundary. Oh, it's in Bahrain's grasp now. Bilal Khan's not a happy man. He's livid with the effort at short third. It was right underneath the bat, but somehow he manages to get bat on it and gets it past short third for a four. These are crucial runs. Ahmed is playing a very fine innings, 24 of 15 for him. And these could be match winning runs. Yeah, he's played really nicely, isn't he? An immediate impact. Remember, still no Sohel Ahmed. They're short of batter, batter, Bahrain. They flicked around the corner. My protection out there, don't think they'll get the second. I don't think they need that much more off this Bilal Khan over. Three singles with no wickets wouldn't be a bad result. That would leave you 18 off 12, and then you target the penultimate over, the 19th. That looks a very relaxed bar in dugout. Maybe sensing something special. But what an effort this has been by the lower order as well. Despite Imran Ali and Heather Ali's quick departure. Rizwan and Ahmed have stood tall and stood out. This goes up into the sky. Long off comes underneath it. Holds on. It's Bilal Khan that strikes back. Was it needed from Rizwan? Really good catch from Rafiola. Surely a single would have done. They didn't need a boundary. I'll tell you what, this game is not yet over. Climax to anticlimax. And that's why they say in the death overs, the low full toss comes in very handy. Straightforward catch to Rafiola. Rizwan but departs for 12 in 11. He's played his part. It's 157 for six. So it's a big fast bowler, Ali Daywood to the crease. He's in at number nine, but we're not certain whether or not Sohel Ahmed could bat. So you could make that 157 for seven, actually really a virtual 157 for eight. Surely he'll have to come out if it's less than 10 to win. Big, big strike back from Bilal Khan. Nails the block hole again. Brilliant bowling. Surely that shot, it just wasn't needed, was it? Bar in dugout would be shouting and saying, get Ahmed on strike, Ali. That's the plan. But what a delivery. Under pressure. And that is so important to Oman's plans. Keeps it simple, uncomplicated. Crucial few deliveries. It'll be a single for Dawood, but that means he'll keep the strike. So Amir will be left stranded at the non-striker's end to start. The 19th, 18 bold, 158 for 7. 20 to win off 12 here, Mikhail. Rizwan, but will he be looking at that shot and just wondering why, oh, why did he give it away? Oh, the batting card. 
The first three wickets fell in quick succession. None of the batters getting to double figures. But then that partnership between Imran Ali Butt and Haider Ali resurrected, bailed the team out of trouble and uh, gave them the roadmap to chase down this target. And after that, Ahmed bin Nasir, he's looked so good. 25-16, what a cameo. Satya and Rizwan just about hung around for a wee bit. And now it all depends on how Ahmed bin Nasir takes it forward. He has the tail for company, Ali Dawood, so El Ahmed who's still to come out to bat. He's nursing a niggle and that's why he went off the field. No news of him coming back. Remain. And there's the news from the other ground. You can see the ground staff going about their work. If we just zoom out from there, you'll see the UAE have won by seven wickets. They've had a real scare. Will the upset be here at the main oval? All eyes now on this game. It's 19 to win off 11. And you sense that they're going to need at least a couple of boundaries off fires, but perhaps from Amir. No, Andrew, just make things very simple over here. 19 of 11 technically means three big hits away from equaling the score and a single. <laughs> now, how easy is it to get that? In the T20 format, you'd always want to believe this is a very gettable situation. Yeah, still no sign of Sohel Ahmed with the pads on. It's Abdul Majid Abbasi who does have the pads on. So he'll be at number 10. I'm not sure if Sohel Ahmed is going to be capable of going out there. We see no sign of him. He's probably still in the air conditioning. Might be shades of Graham Smith. Some heroics needed at the very end. Goes with that slower ball bouncer. Hit away. I don't think they're going to get a second. Not to Ayan Khan, the subfielder who's on. He makes a big difference. <laughs> this game very much on. 18 of 10. Three big sixes and Bahrain dugout will be celebrating. Another two wickets and Uman will walk back victorious in game one on day one of the ACC Men's T20 Premier Cup 2024. And what a start we've had to this tournament. UAE was struggling for most part of the game. Pulled off one of their finest wins in T20 international cricket. And now Oman, after putting up a strong total, are being pushed to the sidelines by a gritty and determined Bahrain side. Bowls him. And they could be just one wicket away. That's number eight, but it could be a virtual number nine. Daywood not known for his batting. And Bahrain just coming up short at the critical moments. It's another off cutter. A swing across the line, and the stumps are castled. Well, that's what happens when you play across the line. Again, a slow off cutter, change of pace, and enough for Fayaz Butt's experience to come in handy in these situations. Another wicket falls. Ali Dawood walks back without troubling the score as much. It's 160 for 8. Abdul Majid, he's in at number 10. We still don't know if number 11 is going to bat or not. Desperately needs a single. It's what they'll get. Really not renowned for his batting. And it's all over now to one man. It's over to Amir bin Nazir. Can he pull this off? Surely these are the two balls, particularly this fifth delivery. He has to target. And that's why, Andrew, the plan is simple from here on for Bahrain. Ahmad Nasser has to farm all the strike, which means... He'll have to play the next eight deliveries. It's important for him to keep strike. That's where Bahrain has a realistic chance of winning. Well, every single fielder in the offside again up in the circle. Looks like it's going to be that slower ball bouncer. Instead goes for the Yorker. Not a good delivery. Misses it completely. Whipped away for four. He wants a no ball to go with it. I don't think he'll get it. It was well below waist height. Now it's 13 off 7. It's a single. It's time to be the hero. Amir bin Nazir. 
Very poor bowling. Very poor bowling here by Fayaz Bhatt. All he had to do was just keep it straight. But he's allowed the pressure off Bahrain once again and given them a chance of stealing two points in this contest. You can't be straying down leg in this situation. One of the most experienced campaigners for the side. And that's why Zishan Maksud was quick to have a word with him. Well, this feels like a massive ball, doesn't it? I'm not even sure he wants four or six. I think the best result for Bahrain is a single. Last ball of butt spell. Now he wants a wide. He's actually... I think he might be getting a no ball. He is going to get a no ball, so it's a run to the total. He'd already bowled the short one in the over. It's a no ball with a free hit to follow. And now more conjecture. The batter's across to the square leg umpire. I don't know what more he wants. He's already got the no ball. And I tell you what, this is going to be a very big delivery. Considered a four off the last. This was very close. Extremely close. Matter of centimeters, or should I say millimeters. I think Bahrain have got the right end of that call. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. 12 to win off seven. Free hit incoming. Nails the block hole. So it'll just be a single. They won't even think about the second. Not the worst result. Maybe for Bahrain. It'll be 11 off the final over. It'll be bowled by Bilal Khan. It's 167 for eight. So 11 to win off six. It all comes down to this final over. We are still not certain whether or not the injured Sahel Ahmed is going to be able to bat. We're, we're trying to get word from Bahrain's dugout. I don't see someone padded up here, Mikhail. Just goes to show that injury must be severe. Oh, he goes for the scoop. That is going to be a four again. This is a big moment in the game, and what a shot by Ahmed. That makes it 7-5 and five now. Well, great bravery. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. He got into position. He read that it was going to be the Yorker. And you need 11 off and over. You need at least one boundary, don't you? And he wanted to get it early in the over. Fine leg up in the circle. Scooped away for four. We saw Bahrain's head coach, Baskar Palai, on his feet. Nervous energy everywhere. 7 to win off five. Now fielders running everywhere, Mikhail. Fine leg goes back. The man who was out of deep cover, he comes up into the circle. What can Cam produce? Not going to take the single. I think Ahmed is saying he's got to do it himself. I'll tell you what. Most of the fielders on the off are right inside the circle. Short third, deep backward. Beg your pardon, backward point. Covers and mid off as well. There is... In fact, a short extra cover and a long off is in position. This is going to be very crucial. Seven of four. If he gets anything on the off beyond the 30-yard circle, that's going to be four. It's now a situation of margins. I just wonder, is he lining this up, thinking he's got to face all four of these balls? He's looking for the one to target, the one to hit a maximum with. That would almost get them home. Goes for the block hole, gets it. They don't know whether to take the single. They turn it down. They're not going to take one. I think that indicates there isn't an 11th man to come. Soil Ahmed may not be able to bat. It's now seven off three. Drama, tension. Tension's reaching its crescendo here, let me tell you that. Bahrain with 10 players are making a match out of this. Pressure on the bowler, pressure on the batter, pressure on everyone involved in this game. Where does he target? I think he might have to look inside out over extra. Can't go for the scoop. Fine legs back. Instead he hacks across the line. They've got to try and get two here. I think it's going to fall perfectly for them. And even though it's Ian Khan, he won't be able to prevent the second. Five to win off two. Four for the super over, Mikhail. And a six means victory for Bahrain. Anything is possible in this game. That man, Ahmed, 
He's fighting a lone battle and he's not giving up. It's been a good over despite a boundary of the very first. What a match this is turning out to be. What a knock Amar bin Nazir is playing. He's kept his side in it. Came to the crease at number six, up the order. The head coach is almost on the field himself. <laughs> He's got all that experience from the Ranji Trophy. May have never seen drama or tension like this. It's a 30-year-old born in Karachi playing for Bahrain. If he gets a boundary, it's a super over minimum that we'll have. Now the field is completely changed. Fine leg comes up, square leg comes up, deep cover goes back. It's a deep backward third that goes back to Bilal Khan is telegraphing this. It's going to be the wide Yorker he'll go to. Five to win off two. Oh, the double bluff. It's a straighter Yorker. Nails it. It's a boundary and a boundary only now needed for Bahrain. Brilliant bowling. That's vintage Bilal Khan on display. When the chips are down, expect him to come out with brilliance. What a delivery. Just trying to improvise, Ahmed. Found himself in no position right underneath the bat. And this makes the equation now five needed a one. Can Ahmed pull off a high steer for Bahrain? Can he hit the home run to secure victory? A boundary will even scores. This field has changed just like how the weather has changed over here this morning. Field is moving left, right. Mohammed Nadeem at short third. There's a deep backward point. There's deep covers. There's long off, long on. Practically everybody stationed at the boundary, only four inside the circle. There's only three on the leg side, would you believe? I think surely Amir has got to take a risk here. He's got to take a step outside his off stump and just back his hand eye to try and pick up the Yorker. Might squirt off an inside edge, get four, send it to the super over. Six fielders on the offside, only three on the leg. It all comes down to this. Four for the super over, six to win. Anything else will do for Bilal Khan. And that is brilliant. It's Bilal Khan and Oman that have pulled it out of the fire. Sensational left arm pace bowling. It's really a player of the match performance. Four overs, two for 19. And Oman have taken the win by the very barest of margins. Just three runs. What a performance. What a game to start with. And finally, they can wear a smile on their face. You beauty, Bilal Khan, the experienced campaigner, once again coming to the fore. Bailing his team out of trouble and securing them victory. But Bahrain fought hard, but it's Oman who prevailed in this contest and pocket two points. It was a very close game, as Andrew pointed out, by the barest of margins. Oman win by three runs. Bahrain got to 174 for eight. And Ahmed, absolute delight of an innings, 38. Nevertheless, just fell short in the final few deliveries. That's because the brilliance of Bilal Khan stole the show. It won't be us picking the player of the match, but there's only one man for me. It's Bilal Khan. He's pulled it out of the fire. Four overs, two for 19. He's managed to defend that final over despite the boundary from the first ball. It was 11 to win off six. That became seven off five. Spare a thought for Amir, Amir bin Nazir. He batted brilliantly, 38 off 26. Great contributions from the two Ali's, Imran Ali Butt and Haider Ali Butt with 50 and 47. But that injury to Soil Ahmed, well, it may well have ended up costing Bahrain that game. We don't think he was going to be fit to bat. And as a consequence, it's just three runs they've come up short by. An entertaining, a quite brilliant contest to start this ACC Premier Cup. UAE and Oman may be top of the table, but they've got there with two massive scares. Oh yes, quite indeed. It's been a bowling masterclass here by Bilal Khan. Two for 19 in his four. Certainly the most valuable player this morning. Shakil Ahmed began well in the power plays, 2 for 28 for him. He was brilliant as well. Each time Omar needed a wicket, he was there for the team. Fayaz but a little expensive for his two wickets, leaked a few runs in the death overs. Akib Ilyas backed his 50 with a performance of 2 for 41 with the ball. Nevertheless, Oman surviving a scare and by the end of it, will pocket those two points and just about go back to the dressing room, looking back at where they could have done things better. Nevertheless, Bahrain, they did lose a few early wickets, three wickets for 22 runs, but then a partnership came in that took them to a position of strength and that's where the chase began. Well, here's a look at the highlights. It was all 
Oh man, in the power play, despite the occasional edge, Safraz Ali, well, he was dismissed early, gone for just seven. Umer Tor gone for two, cleaned up by Bilal Khan. And then when the third wicket fell, caught out in the deep by Prajapati, you thought it was game over at 22 for three. But then a fantastic 92 run partnership as the sun started to break through the heavens and pierce those overcast skies between the two alleys. I thought they batted really nicely 50 off 34 with six boundaries for the keeper batter, Imran Ali. And then for Hyder Ali, the skipper, 47 off 27, including two incredible sixes inside out over extra cover to be honest they were fully in control of the chase that was a big moment the drop catch by Meheran Khan another inside out one over over extra for six and shortly after though the strike back from Shaquille Ahmed that was the big wicket well that certainly was the turning point as far as Oman is concerned then wickets kept falling in a heap and in quick succession Imran Ali departed as well soft dismissal Satya to departed Ilyas there got the wicket a few edges here and there as Bahrain continued to move on and get closer to their target. Luck was in their favour, but a low full toss then resulted in another wicket courtesy of Bilal Khan delivery. And each time Bahrain tried to move forward, they lost a wicket. Ahmed kept things alive, hopes alive, but by the end of it, it was Bilal Khan's experience, his brilliance that got Oman home safely. Well, they've had a huge fright here, the hosts of this ACC Men's Premier Cup 2024. Being honest, I think Bahrain will look back at that game, particularly the last three overs of the first innings where they leaked 47 runs through some pretty injudicious selections with their bowlers. And then, just unable to get over the line, that injury to Sohel Ahmed was a big one. We wish him well. Let's hope he's not ruled out for the tournament on the opening day without even being able to have a bat. But ultimately, oh man, their experience, their class has just about told. Only just though. They win by three runs. They'll be in second on the points table. UAE will be past them in first with a big, big win. And a healthy net run rate boost too over Kuwait. Although they had a fright, they were none for two in their chase of 178 to win across on the second ground. It'll wrap up our coverage from inbox here. We'll be back with a post-match presentation. That will be in a few moments' time with Pranav Mehta. Do come and join us then before we get into the afternoon clashes. We'll see you very shortly. Hello, hello.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you all to the post-match presentation of the ACC Men's Premier Cup 2024 here in the heart of Muscat at the Oman Cricket Academy. Before we begin, I would like to thank ACC, Asian Cricket Council and the Oman Cricket for hosting this T20 Cricket Tournament. We would also like to thank our sponsors. Official streaming partner India is Fancode. Official broadcasting partner Nepal, Kantipur TV. Official partners Dafa News, 1X Bat, Babu 88 Sports. Commercial partners TCM. In the first league match of the tournament, Oman has defeated Yes, it is the home team Oman that has defeated Bahrain by the mere smallest of margins, that is three runs. And what a thriller have we witnessed here. Commencing ahead, I would like to first call in the captain of the winning side, Zishan Maksud. Zishan, could we have a word with you, please? Zishan, how are the heartbeats now? Yeah, it is calm now. Uh, it is a very tough game for us. And uh, Alhamdulillah, we come, uh, you know, as a winning side because of the players, and they have uh, put hardcore effort on the, in the centre, which give us a win. Uh, take us through the match in a very short span. Uh, what do you think? The runs were less on board, or was it brilliant comeback from the Bahraini side? Uh, definitely, they played very well. They gave us a, uh, uh, so much of tough time uh, because we kids plays very well. I think we have we are sh uh, short of 20 to 20 runs, and uh, we couldn't bowl very well, but. Uh, Whenever I need a uh, breakthrough, uh, you know, bowlers, they are coming and uh, doing the uh, outstanding job like Milal Khan, Akib, Shakil, and Fiaz, but they have done uh, tremendous for today's game. So definitely they will come and, uh, you know, perform better. One final question. Shakil, Shakil Ahmed was under the pump with those two drop catches, and then you trusted him with the ball. You gave him a lot of confidence, and he produced that all-important wicket, which could have well been the difference between both the sides. Yeah, definitely, because uh, fielding is a different case, and uh, as, as a bowling and batting, uh, we have to, you know, uh, keep faith on the players, uh, whatever it happens on the field of bowling. Uh, so that is not going to change uh, on the faith side. And he came and he delivered. He gave us a crucial wicket. So that's why uh, I think uh, today Oman is the winning side. Congratulations, Ishan. Thank you very much. So with that, we would like to give away the player of the match. To present the award, it, I would like to introduce Mr. Hamimullah Hamid, who is the match referee for today's match. The player of the match goes to none other than the showman, Akib Elias. I would like you, like you to receive the trophy. 62 of 53 and two wickets to his name for 41 as well. Akib, you're making it a habit here in Oman. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. I have to, you know, as a senior player in the team, I have to win matches for my team and at my home ground. I have to do really well because, you know, teams are doing really well in T20s. You have to take the responsibilities as the teams are, all the associate teams, you know, they are competitive ones and T20 is a game, anything can happen. So I have to take a lot of responsibility and make my team win. Today was a different kind of day. It, things didn't work for you with the bat in the start. You kept your patience, stayed there and you capitalized when things mattered the most. Yeah, obviously not all those days are same and when I was playing around the 7th or 8th ball and I was having only two runs at the board, I tried to go in there but then I thought I missed the ball and I thought that I have the quality, you know, to cover up many balls. Even if I miss 20 balls, I can cover up in one over. So why should, that's what my coach and my team said to me. They gave a message that you just stay on the wicket and at the end, hopefully we know that you will cover it up. And this was a innings which my coach loved it because he said you consolidated the whole innings and, you know, the team did really well. One final question. This was a brilliant knock, but where does this stand in your list of wonderful innings? See, I'm, I'm a player who loves to play aggressive. You know, I love something around 30 balls, 70 runs. But this, when you know you're struggling and you know you stay at the wicket and you make your team win at the end when you come out of the tough time and you enjoy the innings, that is one of you know among the top innings that I've played. Congratulations, Akib. We are expecting a lot more from you, especially because Oman is hosting this tournament. Thank you so much, Prime. So that was the player of the match, Akib Ilyas. Thank you for joining us today. Before we sign off, a reminder for the upcoming clash. Yes, it is Nepal versus Malaysia. Don't miss the excitement. To catch all the excitement, tune into Fancode if you're in India, Kantipur, if you, Kantipur TV if you're in Nepal, and the ACC YouTube, YouTube page for the rest of the world. Stay tuned.